नमस्कार आदाब सचिकाल कसा का है केम छो हेलो एंड वेलकम इन गेट वाला सो स्टूडेंट दिस इज वन शॉर्ट सीरीज एंड एज यू ऑल नो इन वन शॉर्ट सीरीज इन इच लेक्चर वी कंप्लीट वन इंटायर चैप्टर और वन इंटायर टॉपिक ऑफ एनी सब्जेक्ट लाइक आई एम डीलिंग मशीन डिजाइन सब्जेक्ट विथ यू एंड इन वन शॉर्ट फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ वन शॉर्ट सीरीज आई हैव ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड ब्रेक्स चैप्टर देन इन नेक्स्ट लेक्चर आई हैव कंप्लीटेड क्लचेस चैप्टर देन इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर आई हैव कंप्लीटेड डिजाइन अगेंस्ट स्ट्रैटिक लोड चैप्टर in the next lecture i have completed design again fluctuating load and after that i have completed this welded joint today the chapter or topic which we are going to start is riveted joints means today in this lecture of one shot series of machine design subject we will complete chapter riveted joint okay so now i am starting but before starting this is just brief introduction about me as you all know my name is ramanand bansal you are rb sir i have cracked gate in 2014 With All India Rank 70, then I got selected in IOCL, HP Sir and Bark. Finally, I have joined IOCL as Operation Officer in Hajira Terminal Surat. After working there for one year, I left the job to pursue my passion towards teaching. And since then, I am teaching in the field of Gate and ESC. So this is just brief introduction about me. The chapter which we will discuss today is Riveted Joints. And in today's lecture, this will be our lecture flow. In this chapter, first we will complete or understand what is intro riveted joint. and how riveting occurs okay so this will be introduction of riveted joint okay but in riveted joint mainly that which we have we mainly we have to study design of riveted joint means we have to study this riveted joint with respect to design point of view and to study this riveted joint with respect to design point of view first we will understand what are the various types of riveted joint and after that we will understand various terminologies of riveted joint and after that we will start the analysis of riveted joint when number of rows in each row are same and after that in riveted joint we will discuss one special case that special case is diamond pattern means we will discuss diamond pattern of riveted joint so this will be today uh, our lecture flow for today's class you may say sir in riveted joint we have we study one more we should study one more topic and that topic is eccentric loading and riveted joint but in today's lecture i will not discuss eccentric loading and riveted joint the reason is because eccentric method to solve the problem of eccentric loading in riveted joint and bolted joint are same means uh, whether question is coming from riveted joint whether question is coming from bolted joint method to solve the problem of eccentric loading and uh, of riveted and bolted joint are nearly same so what we will do in this lecture of one short series we will complete riveted joint with uh, without eccentric loading uh, in next lecture we will complete bolted joint without eccentric loading and after completing eccentric uh, riveted joint without eccentric loading and bolted joint without eccentric loading i will uh, take one more lecture of one shot series in which i will discuss eccentric loading in both bolted and riveted joint so you can say uh, as per my flow of machine design uh, riveted joint is different chapter uh, bolted joint is different chapter and eccentric loading in bolted and riveted joint is different chapter so when i am discussing riveted joint i miss i am not talking about eccentric loading in riveted joint because eccentric loading in riveted joint and bolted joint will complete in some different chapter okay so today for, this will be our lecture flow for today's class so first we will discuss in, uh, what is riveted joint and some introduction of riveted joint uh, uh, ri first uh, this is the basic construction of a rivet in this rivet uh, this portion is known as head here i, I already named the, the uh, named the I already written name of this portion in this diagram. This portion is known as shank. This portion is known as shank. Suppose right now diameter of this shank is small d, okay, and this is also known as diameter of rivet. So whenever I am saying diameter of rivet, means I am talking about diameter of shank portion of rivet. Whenever I am saying diameter of rivet, means I am talking uh, talking about diameter of shank portion of rivet. So a rivet has a cylindrical shank. with a head one end it is used to produce permanent joint between two pads means what is the purpose of riveted joint it is used to produce permanent joint permanent joint between two pads how for that i am explaining riveting process means how uh, we connect uh, two pads through riveted joint suppose my objective is to connect these two pads suppose this plate is plate a and this plate is plate b okay here i am uh, explaining how riveting occurs but in this unit our objective is not to study riveting process just for understanding i am explaining this 
our objective is to study riveted joint with respect to design point of view like when i was discussing welded joint in that case i i, I don't i have not discussed what is welding just for understanding i explained only definition but how welding occurs what is arc welding what is flame welding that thing we have not discussed because that was the part of manufacturing we had discussed welded joint in machine design with respect to design point of view similarly we will discuss riveted joint with respect to design point of view just for understanding i am explaining this process suppose this is plate a and this is plate b our objective is to connect plate a and b through riveted joint my objective is to connect plate a and b through riveted joint so uh, uh, this portion is rivet you can see it is rivet now to insert this rivet in both the plate first what we need to do first what we need to do we need to make a hole in this plates so suppose diameter of rivet is d so what we will do first we will make a hole in this plates which diameter should be little higher than the diameter of this rivet okay suppose diameter of rivet is 10 mm so diameter of this hole should be a 10.5 mm or 11 mm means what we will do in both the plate we will make a hole which diameter should be more than the diameter of this rivet okay after that we can insert this sank portion of rivet here okay but right now both plate are not connected because if you want you can uh, uh, you can separate this plate b so to connect plate and b a and b what we will do uh we will apply this above portion or we will pressurize uh, this, this above portion of this rivet rivet okay by the process upsetting process means simply you can see what we are doing uh, we are applying pressure here to apply pressure suppose we are doing hammering and due to this pressure it will take the shape like this here you can see and when it, uh, and uh, after uh, after when it is taking shape like this we will remove this die and if we will remove this die it will look like this now you we can not separate suppose this is plate a this is plate b now you can not separate plate b without uh, without failing the fail without the failure of rivet how because if you will try to separate plate a or b uh, this portion was already present now the by this process riveting process we have uh, make one more uh, 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 you can see head head type portion here also so if you will try to uh, separate a and b it will not separate because this and this portion of rivet will uh not allowed to separate plate a and b means we have connected plate a and b through riveted joint now which is why it is known as permanent joint because you can not separate plate a and b without the failure of rivet if you want to separate plate a and b you need to break this portion of rivet and after breaking this rivet uh, portion of rivet plate a and b will get separate with each other means without uh, without failing this rivet we can not separate plate a and b that's why this riveted joint is also known as permanent joint okay so it is the method in which uh, how me, me, method of doing riveting okay but uh, this thi this uh, thing i have already explained for understanding point of view we have to study this chapter chapter with respect to design point of view and to study this chapter with respect to design point of view first we need to understand various classification of riveted joint okay so in this we will study two type of riveted joint first is lap joint or lap riveted joint you can also say and second is butt joint or butt riveted joint okay what is butt joint that i already explained in to all of you in welded joint okay and when we are making butt joint by using weld that butt joint is known as butt weld when we will make uh, make butt joint by using rivets that riveted joint will be known as butt riveted joint okay that i will explain also uh, in upcoming slides okay butt joint is as further classified as single strip butt joint and double strip butt joint what is single strip double strip butt joint that i will i will also explain okay okay so first we are doing classification of riveted joint like this okay first we will understand what is lap joint what is butt joint and in butt joint what is single strip butt joint and one is double strip butt joint so first i am explaining what is lap joint it is a basic diagram of lap joint just for understanding point of view i have drawn this diagram now in lap joint only you need to remember one point here you can see this plate is suppose plate a and this plate is plate b okay it is this, uh, uh, this plate is plate a and this plate is plate b our objective is to connect plate a and b okay so we want to connect plate a and plate b through riveted joint and here you can see it is the front view and it is the top view of this diagram now here in this diagram you can see this plate a and plate b are overlapping plates so whenever we are connecting two plates by riveted joint and those two plates are overlapping plates overlapping plates then that riveted joint is known as lap joint it is very simple 
रिवेटेड ज्वाइंट बिटवीन टू ओवरलैपिंग प्लेट्स आर नोन एज डेफिनेशन इज वेरी सिंपल ओके लाइक हेयर वी है कनेक्टेड प्लेट ए एंड बी दिस इज प्लेट ए प्लेट बी ओके राइव नॉ दिस इज नोन एज रो ऑफ रिवेट ओके इन दिस रो वी है अटैच थ्री रिवेट ओके वेदर इन दिस रो वी है अटैच थ्री रिवेट फोर रिवेट फाइव रिवेट और वी आर यूजिंग मोर रोज ऑफ रिवेट दैट इज डिफरेंट थिंग बट हेयर वी है कनेक्टेड प्लेट ए एंड बी प्लेट बी थ्रू रिवेटेड ज्वाइंट एंड हेयर प्लेट ए एंड बी आर ओवरलैपिंग प्लेट्स मीन्स दिस रिवेटेड ज्वाइंट इज नोन एज लैप ज्वाइंट ओके ओके जस्ट फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग आई हेम मेक दिस डायग्राम इफ यू वॉन्ट यू कैन ड्रॉ दिस दिस इज रिवेट सो इफ यू वॉन्ट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू शो हेड पोर्सन ऑफ रिवेट यू कैन ड्रॉ लाइक दिस ओके इट इज लाइक दिस ओके बट जस्ट फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग आई हेम मेक दिस डायग्राम ओके now second one is butt joint when i was explaining belted joint i have already explained what is butt joint if two plate suppose i want to connect a and b through butt joint butt joint means the a plate a and plate b should be in same plate if two plates which we are uh, wa which wa we want to connect we are keeping those two plate in same plane that joint is known as butt joint uh, okay like this if we want to connect suppose this is plate a this is plate b we want to connect plate a and b and plate a and b are kept in same plane means that joint will be known as butt joint now to connect this plate a and b after keeping them in same plane if you are connecting this plate a and b through weld then that joint is known as butt weld but right now we want to connect a and b through riveted joint so if we are making butt joint through rivets then that joint will be known as butt riveted joint but how we can make that joint okay so in this type of riveting the plates to be joined are kept in same plane okay without forming an overlap because lap joint may in lap joint we were making overlap here no overlap will come because plate a and b are kept in same plane but how we can make this butt joint through rivet suppose this is plate a which we want to connect and this is plate b okay this is plate a this is plate a only focus on plate a and plate b okay uh, to underst for understanding point of view i am also drawing this diagram separately uh this is suppose this is plate a just for understanding the diagram i have already drawn there but for understanding point of view this is plate b so we want to connect this plate a and plate b and now the connection between plate a and b will be butt joint why because you can see here i have kept plate a and plate b in same plane i have kept plate a and plate b in same plane now but how we can connect plate a and b that is important that that is the point to understand here why because uh, i want to connect plate a and plate b through rivet for to make rivet there should be overlap but in butt joint there is no overlap it is because how we can connect through so to make a butt joint we need to take we need to take the help of some other plates which is known as cover plate or supporting plate or strap plate because without taking the help of some other supporting plate we cannot connect a and b by riveted joint okay because they are not overlapping each other so what we will do we will here we will take help of some another plate which is known as supporting plate or cover plate or strap plate like this is um, this is supporting or uh, supporting one supporting plate if you want you can also place supporting plate below side also that is different thing okay now what we will do is see this what we can do, what we will do you can see this supporting plate is overlapping with plate a also and this supporting plate is overlapping with plate b also okay now what we will do we will make a hole in plate a and this supporting plate and we will connect these two plate pl this plate a and supporting plate through riveted joint now it is your will how much rivets you want to use here okay it is an another thing if you want you can take one more row in this row i can uh, attach a uh, three rivet four rivet five rivet that is different thing but So through this arrangement, can I say plate A and supporting plate we have connected through riveted joint, like in the same manner, in the same manner, in in the same manner in which we have connected plate A and supporting plate, in the same manner we will connect plate B and supporting plate, like suppose in the same manner I am connecting plate B and supporting plate. So now after this riveting, I have also connected plate B and supporting plate. So you can say. plate a is connected with supporting plate plate b is also connected with supporting plate means can i say indirectly plate a and b are connected with each other because if you want to place separate this plate a it cannot separate uh, because this supporting plate will is not allow if you want to separate plate b it cannot separate because again this supporting plate will not allow 
means can i say through the with the help of this supporting plate we have connected plate a and b through rivets okay and this plate a and b are kept in same plane so this riveted joint is known as butt riveted joint and butt riveted, we can connect two plate by through, through butt riveted joint by only by using the sub help of some other sub plates which are known as cover, cover plate or supporting plate so here a and b are known as main plates because we are we our objective is to connect a and b okay now to connect a and b we are taking the help of this uh, supporting plate which is known as cover plate or strip plate so uh, and uh, in this type of routing the plate to be joined are kept in same plane without forming an overlap it is under here plate a and b are main plates which we want to connect through butt joint but to connect plate a and b through butt joint we need to take the help of another plate which is known as cover plate or strip plate which is known as cover plate or strip plate is placed over the either one side or both side of the main plate like in this diagram i have placed this cover plate in one side of the, uh, of this plates but if you want you can place this strip plate or cover plate in both side of the plate okay with the plate then this riveting uh, and then it is riveted with the main plate this cover plate is riveted with the main plate and if we'll cover co rivet this cover plate with main plate means ultimately this main plate that is a and b will get connect with each other and this riveted joint is known as butt riveted joint but here you can see in butt riveted joint we are taking the help of some another supporting plate that is cover plate or strip plate and either we will place cover or strip plate in one side of main plate or we will place cover plate or strip plate on both side of main plate main plate so if we are placing this cover plate or strip plate on one side of play main plate means we are using only one strip plate so that butt joint is known as single strip single strip butt joint okay single strip means we are using sing, only one strip plate single strip butt joint okay but if we are placing this cover plate or supporting plate or strip plate on both side of main plate then that butt joint is known as double strip double strip butt joint double strip butt joint so see this is single strip butt joint this is double here we want to connect ultimately plate a and plate b and they are kept in same plane means we want to make butt weld sorry butt riveted joint for that we are using two strip plate we are taking the help of two strip plate that's why this joint is known as double strip butt riveted joint okay okay if here i will ask how many rows of rivet may have made this is known as rows in lab joint you can see this is rows is rows and here only i have used one row of rivet here you you can say sir here i am using two row of rivet no here also i am using one row of rivet when you are they see this you are uh, visualizing how many rows of rivet we have used for that only focus on one plate either on plate a especially when you are looking butt way butt joint because in lab joint both plate are overlapping so if whether you are look, looking plate a whether you are looking plate b only one row will be visible if there is only one row but if you uh, in butt bent butt joint if you will see this entire system you can say here two row is coming but can i say this row of rivet is belonging to plate a because if you will apply any force in uh, here and here this force will try to break the rivet of plate a it will not try to break the break the rivet of plate b and this force will only try to break the rivet of uh, break the rivet of plate b means when we are visual doing the analysis with respect to this force we have to only focus on this rivet when we are uh, doing the analysis with respect to this force we are we have to only analyze the, these rivets okay means when we are analyzing plate b we don't have to do anything with plate rivets of plate a when we are analyzing the force which is coming on plate a we have to don't have to do anything with the rivets which are coming on plate b so when you are counting how many rows of rivet are present in in the in that system or how many total number of rivet we, we have used for that only focus on single plate especially when we are looking butt riveted joint okay so and we either we'll focus on plate a or plate b so if you look in plate a how many rows of rivet we have used only one row this is known as row okay if you look a, or whatever arrangement we are using in plate a same in case of butt joint same arrangement we will use in plate b so if you look in plate b how many rows of, of rivet we are using sir only one so in this way we will visualize butt joint okay 
or if you understand this concept uh, if you are able to solve the problem of left joint then you will easily be able to solve the problem of butt joint only difference is in left joint whether you lick plate a or plate b number of rows of rivet will remain same if it is one it will be one but in butt joint uh, do, don't see entire system only see only one plate if you are looking rows or rivets of plate a don't focus on plate b if you are looking rivets of plate b don't focus on plate a same is valid also valid for lap joint also but in lap joint whether you are looking plate a or whether you are looking plate b if there is three rivet or one row of rivet and one row of rivet it will be one uh, visible to only one row of rivet so if you see this entire system simultaneously then only then also you will see only one row of rivet but here by mistake if you see entire system simultaneously uh, you can say sir here two rows of rivet are coming but here we have to only see one plate at a time and if you will see one plate at a time you uh, you can conclude here one row of rivet are coming okay now uh, you understood the classification of riveted joint but now we will classify riveted joint based on the how many rows of rivet we are using like in this diagram one row of rivets we are using in this diagram one row of rivet are using in this diagram also one row of rivet we are using but it might be possible in some another diagram we are using two rows of rivet in some another diagram three rows of rivet we are using so now i am classifying the riveted joint based on how many rows of rivet we are using if we are using only one row of rivet then that riveted joint is known as single riveted joint means here if i am using word single double that will represent how many rows of rivet we are using okay how many rivets we are using that i am not saying how many rows of rivet i am using that this is known as rows of rivet okay so how many rows of rivet we are using so if we will use only one row of rivet means this riveted joint has uh, only one or row of rivet in the lap joint or if uh, uh, or only one row of rivet on each plate of butt joint means when you are looking butt joint only see one plate at a time okay that's why i have written definition like this okay but i think this concept you understood already so in this diagram also you can see one row of rivet we are i am using means this is single riveted lap joint because it is lap joint here this diagram if you look this diagram if you look here i uh, only see on one plate either on plate a or plate b so if i will look plate a you can see a, only one row of rivet i am using in this row four number of rivets are represent that is different thing but only one row of rivet i am using means again it is single riveted butt joint okay now if i want to write the complete naming of this joint one row i am using that's why it is single row and uh, since plates are overlapping plate means it is lap joint okay here uh, it is again single row because in one plate only one rows of rivet are coming so single row now since it is butt joint you have to also you uh, you need to also see whether it is single strap or double strap so for that see uh we are using strap plate in only one side of main plate means it is single strap so it is single row single strap butt joint yes sir if we are using strap plate on both side then it will be single row double strap butt joint okay this is the complete name of this joint now if we are using two rows of rivet then that riveted joint is known as double riveted joint two rows of means in low left joint you will only two row of rivet will be visible and in butt joint in each plate don't see entire system only see one plate at a time in one plate only two rows of rivet will be visible like here two rows of rivet are used in left joint or two rows of rivet are used in each main plate of butt joint then that riveted joint is known as double riveted joint like if i will write complete name of this riveted joint how many rows of rivet are present two so it is double row and since plate are overlapping plate so it is double row lap repeated joint okay now see this diagram uh it is butt joint so uh, focus on my, uh, each main plate so it, it is plate a if it is plate b if you are looking in plate a don't focus on plate b if you are looking plate b don't focus on plate a so suppose i am looking plate a and in plate a you can see how many rows of rivet are present so two rows of rivet okay and since two rows of rivets are present it is double row riveted joint but complete naming since it is butt riveted joint so see first see whether it is single strap or double strap so here we have placed strap plate on both side of main plate and since we have placed strap plate on both side of main plate it is double strap so it is double row double strap butt riveted joint 
cut will be take okay similarly if you are using three rows it will be triple row if you are using four row it will be four per row quadrat matlab in this way you can uh, proceed further okay but generally uh, if exam, question is coming in exam up to triple row riveted joint question will come okay so you can say if more than two rows two rows or more than two rows we are using uh, uh, in short manner you can say multiple row riveted joint if only one row is coming single row if either two row or more than two row of riveted rivets are coming then you can say multiple row riveted joint okay it is one of the multiple one of the example of multiple row riveted joint in which we are using two rows of nike now now whenever we are using more rows of rivet in riveted joint either two three four like in this diagram in this diagram if you see uh, now i will explain uh, some pattern of uh, riveting one pattern is chain pattern that i will explain but before that first try to understand first try to understand in this diagram uh, how many rows of rivet we have used sir three rows one row second row triple row so first it is triple row triple row and since plate are overlapping plate so can i say it is triple row triple row lap riveted joint yes sir now in multiple row multiple row riveted joint a pattern of rivets are also important like in this diagram i am explaining i am explaining chain pattern now what is chain pattern now if in each row of rivet like in this diagram uh, in this diagram this is first row of rivet this is second row and this is third row just for understanding this is first row this is second row and this is third row now you can see in this pattern uh, whatever arrangement of rivets i have used in first row same arrangement of rivets you you can visualize we are using in second row same arrangement of rivet present in third row mean can i can i say in this diagram arrangement of rivets in each row are same whatever arrangement we have used in first row same arrangement i have applied in second row also same arrangement we have done in third row also so if arrangement of rivets in each row are same then that pattern of riveted joint are known as chain pattern chain pattern means arrangement of rivets in each row are same then pattern of rivet are known as chain pattern okay okay so this is means uh, this is first row in which we have used three row in second row also we have we, sorry in the, this is first row in which we are we are using three rivets again in next row also we are using three row or three rivets in the same pattern same pattern means in front of this rivet i have arranged this rivet and after that below this this rivet below this this rivet in the same pattern i have in the same pattern i am arranging rivets in third row also so this pattern is known as chain pattern okay so if examiner has mentioned triple row lap riveted joint with chain pattern okay you can draw this diagram by yourself we need not to give this diagram only one thing we need to mention how many rivets we are using in each row like here in each row we are we have used three rivets if if we are using four rivets one more rivet we will make but arrangement of rivets in each row will be same if we are talking about chain pattern now one more pattern we need to understand that is a uh, zigzag pattern like again here you can see uh, it is a uh, Uh, which uh, how many um, um, is it single row double row or triple row riveted joint so again you see you can see here we are using three rows of rivet means it is triple row and since plates are overlapping plates so can i say it is triple row lap riveted joint in the same manner you can make triple row butt riveted joint now pattern earlier we have discussed chain pattern now i am discussing one more pattern that is zigzag pattern what difference you are visualizing here 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 uh, uh, in the first row whatever arrangement we have we have used parallel to this arrangement we have um, um, makes the riveted in second row we have done the riveting in second row means whatever arrangement we have used in first row same arrangement we have used in second row also in case of chain pattern but what difference here uh, what difference coming here again for that suppose this is first row this is second row this is third row this is first row this is second row this is third row now in this pattern what changes we have done suppose uh, this is the rivet uh, first rivet of first row i am denoting this rivet as 1.1 this is the second rivet of first row 
this is the third rivet of first row that is 1.3 here you can see it is the first rivet of sec uh, second row that is 2.1 Two is for, uh, representing first uh, which row, and after point uh, one is coming, Mrs. is representing first rivet of second row. It is first rivet, second rivet of second row. It is third rivet of second row. Okay, number of rivet in each row are same, but here what difference is coming? Ah, uh, what difference is coming? Ah, uh, at which point uh, we uh, we have uh, placed the first rivet of first rivet exactly in front of that. we are not placing the first rivet of second uh, second row okay okay means if i will make a horizontal line from first rivet first rivet okay so exactly exactly in front of this rivet in second row no rivet is coming okay you can see here this rivet is above this line and this rivet is below this line okay but here in this diagram you can see if i will make horizontal line from this in next row exactly in front of this next rivet is coming but here exactly in front of this uh, rivet no rivet is coming I, I, I either it is above this or below this but exactly in this line in next row rivet is not coming means here if i will if you will join the center point of this for, for this rivet and this rivet first rivet it is like this similarly if you will join the center point of this and this it is like this center point of this and this it is like this center point of this and this it is like this center point of this and this it is like this it is looking like zigzag 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 that's why this pattern is known as zigzag pattern means in zigzag pattern whatever arrangement we have used in first row in the same pattern we will not arrange in uh, uh, arrange rivets in second row what we will do uh, 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 if i will make a, line, a horizontal line from first rivet either we will place first rivet of second row above this or below this it can be like here it is above this and after placing this first rivet uh, and rest of the rivet you can arrange because in uh, after some time we will uh, study the terminology of rivet joint in which we will study one terminology that is known as pitch pitch is nothing but distance between a center line of two rivet in same row in same row suppose pitch is 10 mm 10 mm means if this is first rivet of second row after distance 10 mm we will arrange second uh, second rivet after distance third rivet third uh, the 10 mm we will arrange third rivet of the same row so after placing the first rivet now you can arrange an, uh, an, uh, rest of the rivets because uh, the pitch distance is supposed 10 mm so this gap will be 10 mm now in third row what we will do we will arrange uh, rivets in third row exactly same as first row now in fourth row what we will do we will arrange rivets in fourth row exactly same as second row means arrangement of rivets in odd numbers of rows will be same arrangement of rivets in even numbers of rows will be same but there will be different in arrangement of rivet in just next row okay whatever arrangement we are using in first row in front of that uh, in front of that arrangement we will not place rivet Wha okay exactly in front of what we will do if i will draw a horizontal line from this first row uh, center of first rivet either above this or below this we will place rivet in the next row exactly in front of this we will not place first uh, rivet of first rivet of next row okay and after placing this first rivet after pitch distance you can place next uh, another rivet and if you are doing arrangement like this what you will feel if you will join center line of uh, rivets of first and second row means uh, rivet of consecutive row you will see the shape like zigzag and this pattern that's why is known as zigzag pattern in zigzag pattern now whatever arrangement you have used in we have used in first row same arrangement we will we use in third row but same arrangement we will not use in second row means next row that is important so this pattern of uh, uh, this pattern is known as zigzag pattern so it is triple row lap riveted joint with zigzag pattern triple row lap riveted joint with zigzag pattern okay so we have discussed the uh, classification of riveted joint i am summarizing and only by looking the diagram you can conclude uh, first was lap riveted joint it is riveted joint between two overlapping plate now if i will ask it is lever lap joint because it is uh, over between overlapping plate but it is single row double row triple row so sir uh, only one row of rivet is coming so it is single row lap riveted joint and in single row lap riveted joint uh, pattern of rivet are not will not come into picture because whether it is chain pattern or zigzag pattern it is applicable when multiple row riveted joint we are using okay now this rivet it is butt joint because it is between two so riveted joint between two overlapping plate are known as butt joint 
In burjon, if you are using one strap plate, then that will be single strap plate. If you are using two strap plate, that will be double strap. Now, if I will ask, it is again single row, multiple row riveted joint. Sir, it is single row. In bar joint, to see how many rows of rivet we are using, only focus on one plate at a time. So, if you will focus on plate A, only one row of rivet are coming. So, it is single row, but riveted joint. Here, single and in single row, it is single strap. In single row, it is double strap. Now, uh, this is single row riveted joint. I already explained. If more than one row of rivet we are using, that will be known as multiple row riveted joint. Like this is double row because two row we are using. Here also it is double row because in bar joint only focus on one plate. So in one plate we are using two row, so it is double row riveted joint. Now if you write complete name, since two row we are using, it is double row and plates are overlapping, is that's why left joint. Now it is chain pattern or zigzag pattern. So arrangement of rivet in each row are same means it is chain pattern. So here if you want to write also pattern, what is pattern? It is chain pattern. Now here in each plate two row of rivet we are using because in but it is burgeon, so only focus on each plate. So in each plate we are using two row, so it is double row. Now single strap, double strap. So since we are using two supporting or strap plates, so it is double strap and plates are uh, in the same plane, that's why but joint. Now pattern, chain pattern or zigzag pattern. So arrangement of rivet in each row are same, so it is chain pattern. Okay. So pattern I have all covered. If arrangement of rivets in each row are same, uh, don't write. You need not to write the definition. Only by looking this diagram you can conclude. If arrangement of rivet in each row are same, that pattern is chain pattern. If arrangement of rivet in each row are like this, uh, means in whatever arrangement we have used in first row, in just in front of rivet uh, of first row, we are not placing rivet in second row. What we are doing? If if it is the first row, first rivet of first row, from this if I will draw a horizontal line. The first rivet of second row either above this or below this and after placing first rivet you can place or other rivets by maintaining a distance pitch equal to pitch distance okay so in this way we, if we are doing riveting that pattern is known as zigzag pattern that pattern is known as zigzag so it is triple row because three row are coming lap riveted joint because plates are overlapping with zigzag pattern okay in classification of riveted joint we will study one more pattern that is diamond pattern but I will dis discuss diamond pattern separately, separately because the, this is uh, th because the analysis of diamond pattern is little bit different as compared to uh, chain pattern or zigzag pattern. One key point in chain pattern and zigzag pattern is right now we are ensuring in both pattern number of rivets in each row are same. Like if I will ask what is the number of rivet in first row? What are the number of rivet in first row? Three in second row three third row three. Means can I say in this diagram number of rivets in each row are same? In the, in, in the same manner, if I in, zigzag, in this zigzag pattern diagram, if I will ask what is the number of pattern in first row, sir, 3, second row, 3, third row, 3, means again here, number of rivets in each row are same. So in both chain pattern and zigzag pattern, right now number of rivets in each row are same. Okay. So we will do the analysis of first this case. After that, I will express, explain uh, diamond pattern. But before that, first we need to understand some terminologies of riveted joint. So uh, uh, now I will discuss some terminologies of riveted joint. Okay. So student, now we will discuss various terminologies of riveted joint. In various terminology, first we will discuss terminology pitch. Now what is pitch? The pitch of the rivet is defined as the distance between the center of one rivet to the center of adjacent rivet in the same row. Okay, I am explaining this definition in this diagram. Pitch or is nothing but it is the dis central distance between two conjugative conjugate rivet in same row. Like suppose I am taking this row. Suppose this is first row. In this row, I am taking the center of this rivet. Now in the same row, the next conjugative rivet is this. Now center of this rivet is this. Now distance between these two point is nothing but it is known as pitch of the rivet. Distance between these two point is known as pitch of the rivet, which I denotes with later small p. So pitch is the central distance between two conjugative rivet in the same row, in the same row. So this is first terminology which I discussed, this is pitch. Now we will discuss uh, one more terminology that is margin or edge distance. We denote margin or edge distance with letter small m. Now what is its margin? Suppose I am taking this plate A. Now in this plate, end of this plate is this. Now the nearest row nearest row from this end is this so from the end of plate distance of nearest row is known as margin okay 
वट इज मार्जिन मार्जिन इज द डिस्टेंस ऑफ नियरेस्ट रो फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम एंड ऑफ प्लेट ओके सो द मार्जिन इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द एज ऑफ प्लेट टू द सेंटर लाइन ऑफ रिवेट इन द नियरेस्ट रो इट इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन एज ऑफ द रिवेट फ्रॉम एज ऑफ द रिवेट टू द सेंटर लाइन ऑफ रिवेट ऑफ नियरेस्ट रो ओके सो दिस डिस्टेंस इज नोन एज मार्जिन एम नाउ हेयर नेक्स्ट टर्मोलॉजी इज ट्रांसफर स्पीच we do not transfer speech as p suffix t we do not transfer speech as p suffix t now what is transfer speech transfer speech or also known as back pitch or row pitch so whether examiner is saying transfer speech or back pitch or row pitch or all all, all terminology are same now what is transfer speech it is the distance between two consecutive rows of rivet on the same plane okay so suppose this is one row of rivet this is one another row of rivet now central distance between this two row is known as transverse pitch that is pt means distance between two rows of rivet is known as simply transverse pitch or back pitch or row pitch now you can understand what are the significance of this terminology okay one terminology i have already discussed is small d small d is diameter of rivet whenever i am saying diameter of rivet means i am talking about diameter of sank portion of rivet diameter of sank portion of rivet now what is the significance of this am pt or and p first uh, from this uh, suppose i am denoting this row as row a next row as row b right now it is double row riveted joint now so this is the edge of this plate now from this edge we will attach a nearest row is row a so what should be the distance of nearest row that is small m means from this edge after distance is small m we will attach a first row of rivet you can say Yeah, a a row of rivet. Okay. Now, when we will uh, attach this a row of rivet, now in this row, what should be the distance between two rivet? Yeah, or central distance between two rivet? That is p, because central distance between two consecutive rivet in same row is nothing but p. So suppose at this location, I in this row I have placed first rivet. So after p distance, I will place another rivet. In the same row after p distance, I will place another rivet. So it is the significance of pitch and m. Now. after this row uh, at after uh, after how much distance we need to place next row so after first row the distance between two row is pt so after pt distance we will place next row that is row b so it is the significance of pt so after m distance from this edge first row or row a row after pt distance b row suppose uh, it is triple row so one more row c row is also coming so after again pt distance we will place c row okay so this is b row right now it is chain pattern so in chain turn pattern we already know uh, the arrangement of rivets in each row will be same so uh, uh, so the rivets which we have placed in row a in the same manner after that we will place in the rivets in the next row that is b row okay so this is the significance of pitch margin and transfer pitch now we have studied one more pattern that is the zigzag pattern of riveted joint for zigzag pattern of riveted joint we will de de define one more pitch which is known as diagonal pitch and we denotes diagonal pitch as letter pd now it is useful for uh, useful data for diagonal uh, uh, zigzag pattern okay we don't require this diagonal pitch for chain pattern this is useful in terminology for a uh, zigzag pattern like uh, this distance i have already discussed this distance is margin okay this dis we have discussed now uh, distance between two consecutive rivet in same row row is pitch so if I, this is first rivet after p distance we will place another rivet after p distance we will place another rivet suppose this is row a this is row b and this is row c now pt is distance between two consecutive row so after uh, this suppose this is row a so after pt distance after pt distance we will place row b suppose this is row a this is row b this is row c so after pt distance we will place row b now in this row b what should be the arrangement of rivet right now it is not chain pattern it is zigzag pattern so what we will do uh, for zigzag pattern we will define one term one more terminology which is known as diagonal term pitch diagonal pitch is what suppose it is the first rivet of this row row a now it is the first rivet of row b now distance between first rivet of row a and first rivet of row a and first rivet of next row is known as diagonal pitch that is pd okay so for zigzag pattern we also need to give the value of diagonal pitch okay 
for chan pattern you can say pd will come exactly equal to p2 pd because uh, 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 the whatever arrangement we have used in row a same arrangement we will use in row b but here we are not using same arrangement in row b now suppose pt is 10 mm pd will definitely more, will be more than 10 mm for diagonal uh, for chan pattern so suppose pt is 10 mm and pd is 12 mm so if i i have drawn the diagram for row a I, after pt distance i will place reverse of row b now how we will place reverse of row b for that first we need to find the location of first rivet and how suppose this is a point 1 first rivet of row a this is b point 1 first rivet of row b this is b point 2 and this is b point 3 okay so how we will place b point 1 for that uh, what i will do from the center line of a1 i will take a arc of radius pd because diagonal pitch is pd now i will draw a arc having radius pd now i will draw a vertical line from after pt distance because transfer pitch is pd so intersection of this line and this arc of radius pd will give the location of first rivet of row b that is b point 1 and after finding the location of first rivet of row b that is b point 1 again after p distance we will place next rivet after p distance we will next place next rivet because pitch is p which is distance central distance between two conjugate rivet in same row okay so this is row b now in row c the arrangement will be same as row a so this diagonal pitch is uh, uh, important dimensions or important terminology for zigzag pattern okay so what is diagonal pitch diagonal pitch is the distance between center of one rivet center of one rivet to the center of adjacent rivet if it is first rivet of first a row it should also be first rivet of b row so center of adjacent rivet located in adjacent row okay so adjacent row of row a is b so this this distance and this distance is nothing but diagonal pitch pd okay so we have discussed this five terminology small d is simple diameter of rivet that is diameter of sank portion of rivet P, small p is margin which is the central distance between two rivet in same row a small m is or edge distance is margin from the edge of the plate the distance of nearest row is known as margin pt is transverse pitch distance between two conjugate row is known as pt for zigzag pattern we have defined one more terminology which is pd diagonal pitch it is the central distance between uh, any uh, a central distance between uh, between one rivet central distance between one rivet to the central rivet uh, central uh, to the to the uh, cent to the rivet of uh, uh, conjugative rivet on adjacent row conjugative rivet in adjacent row like if you are taking the uh, first rivet of row a conjugative rivet right now conjugate rivet of row, conjugative row of row a is row b so we will also take first rivet of row b and distance between first rivet central distance between first rivet of row a and first rivet of row b is nothing but diagonal pitch pd so these are the terminologies of riveted joint okay so student now we'll discuss the analysis of riveted joint when number of rivets in each row are same so whatever formula i will discuss or whatever concept i will discuss that concept i am discussing by assuming number of rivets in each row are same if it is multiple row riveted joint okay now uh, suppose this is one riveted joint it is lap riveted joint but whatever concept i will explaining it is valid for lap riveted joint also but riveted joint also only you, what you have to ensure that number of rivets in each row should be same number of rivets in each row should be same now suppose this riveted joint i am using to connect these two plates this is plate a and this is plate b right now i am assuming the dimension of both the plate are same dimension of means suppose thickness of plate b is t and thickness of plate a is also t so if we exam thickness of plates is, is given means thickness of each plate are same if thickness of uh, plates are different then it will be mentioned in the question okay so right now thickness of both plates are same similarly suppose width of each plate is w width of each plate is i am denoting as w to visualize the width of the plate we need to see the top view of this diagram so it is the top view is diagram so what is t here t is thickness of each plate what is t t is thickness of each plate now what is small w small w is width of each plate width of each plate okay oh oh it is not necessary always double question from double row will come this diagram i have made just for understanding 
it can might be possible actual riveted joint is triple row it might be possible actual riveted joint is single row it might be possible right now it is lap joint it might be possible actual riveted joint is butt joint with single strip plate or butt joint with double strip plate okay so whatever concept i am explaining it is valid for all type of riveted joint but number of rivet in each row should be same now uh, suppose small d is diameter of each rivet so what is small d small is d is diameter of each rivet now suppose what is dh dh is diameter of each hole diameter of each hole small dh is diameter of each hole okay so or and diameter of each hole will be slightly more than diameter of rivet now in the exam a diameter of rivet is given or di and diameter of rivet hole both are given then no problem but suppose in exam diameter of rivet is given but diameter of rivet hole is not given so we will assume that diameter of rivet hole is nearly equal to diameter of rivet so we will take ds same as d but actually ds will be slightly more than d but if dh is not given then we will take ds it will be as equal to d dh equal to d so dh is diameter of rivet hole now suppose a small m what is a small m a small m is number of rows of rivet what is small m a small m is number of rows of rivet like for this diagram how many rows of rivet are involved such two row is for this diagram number of rows of rivet are two okay but but i am not always solving the problem for this diagram i am solving the case where number of rivet in each row are same number of rivet in each row are whether two row are involved or three row are involved so suppose for actual question number of row are number of row is small m for this case number of row is two like for this case if you will see here three rows are involved so value of small m will be three in this diagram uh, again you can see two row are involved so number of value of m will be two uh, for this diagram three row are involved for this diagram three row are involved so number of value of m is only three for this diagram m is 2 but for this diagram see carefully when you are whenever you are looking for butt riveted joint when you are looking in butt riveted joint see carefully number of rivet rows of rivet per plate means in butt riveted joint when, whenever you will look in butt riveted joint you need to see per plate how many rows are involved similarly if you are finding number of rivets you need to see how many rivets are involved per plate okay per plate so here suppose this is plate a so in this plate a how many rows are involved one row second row means how many rows are involved two row so you need to see number of row per plate in lap joint also you need to see number of row per plate but in lap joint you will not get confused because both plate are overlapping but since in butt joint both plate are not overlapping might be you get confused so always see number of rivets or number of row when you are seeing number of rows see number of rows per plate similarly whenever you will see number of rivet also see number of rivet per plate okay when you are looking plate a you need have to nothing to do with plate b when you are looking plate b you need to nothing to do with plate a so in one plate how many rows are involved two so for this question if i will ask what is the num value of m that is number of row it is such two so what is small m that i have already explained uh, that i have explained it is number of rows and you need to see number of rows per plate similarly suppose a small n a small n a small n is number of rivets in each row because rivets in each row because right now i am discussing the case in each row because right now i am discussing the case number of, right now i am discussing the case where number of rivet in each row are same so suppose small n is number of rivets in each row by mistake i have written here number of rows in each row actually it is number of rivets in each row and i am discussing the case where number of rivets in each row is same and if number of rivets in each row are same so we can give what is its value like for this diagram first see whether number of rivets in each row are same yes sir number of rivets are in, in each row are same so what is this that value means number of rivet in each row here number of rivet in each row is 3 so small n is number of rivet in each row like in this case number of rivet in each row is 3 in this case number of rivet in each row is 3 in this case <coughs> number of rivet in each row is 4 okay so small n is not total number of rivet small n is number of rivet in each row okay okay so small n is number of rivet in each row which is small m now suppose now suppose capital n is total number of rivets per plate why i am writing per plate because in butt joint you have to see number of rivets per plate 
because in lab joint you will not get confused here i i will ask what is total number of rivet by looking this diagram you can say sir it is 6 you need not to memorize this formula if in this diagram i will i will ask what is number of rivet you can we will say 9 but if in this diagram i will ask what are number of rivet so don't say sir it is 4 4 8 4 uh, 12 4 16 no you have to see number of rivets per plate per plate because if any lo load is acting in plate a suppose this is plate a so this load will try to fail the rivets of this plate it will not try to fail the rivet of this plate okay so we need to see number of rivets per plate like in one plate number of row are 2 and number of rivets in each row is 4 and total number of rivets are 4 plus 4 that is 8 okay 4 plus 4 8 if number of rivets in each row are same you can also write you can also say that formula to calculate total number of rivet will be small m into small n that is number of rows into number of rivets in each row like in this case number of row are 2 and number of rivets in each row is 3 so value of total number of rivet will be 3 to ja 6 but you need not to memorize this formula by counting also you can easily say only count number of rivets per plate this is important now uh, now suppose sigma tp you will understand uh, when i will start the analysis why i am writing this terminology Sigma TP is permissible tensile stress of plate. Means actual tensile stress in the plate should be either be equal to this or less than this. It should not be more than this. Okay. Similarly, suppose tau P is permissible. shear stress of rivet okay means actual shear stress in rivet either should be equal to tau p or less than tau p similarly suppose sigma cp what is sigma cp it is permissible crushing stress of rivet so sigma tp is permissible tensile stress of the plate tau p is permissible shear stress of the rivet and sigma cp is permissible crushing stress of the rivet now suppose this riveted joint are subjected to axial load p okay this is subjected to axial load p so if all data is given examiner can ask what will should be what will be the load carrying capacity of this system load carrying capacity means Uh, to ensure this system is safe actual load should either be equal to load carrying capacity or less than load carrying capacity means permissible value of p can examiner can ask or if b is given examiner can ask some other data that is different thing so ultimately we have to do the designing of this riveted joint when number of rivets in each row are same now for designing what we need to ensure this system should not fail so this system not, should not fail now in case of riveted joint uh, various types of failure can occur and we have to study three types of failure this failures are tearing failure of plate shearing failure of rivets and crushing failure of rivets and if we want our system should should save means we need to ensure no type of failure should occur means neither tearing failure should occur nor crushing shearing failure of rivets should occur and nor crushing failure of rivets should occur so whenever we are finding any unknown whether it is load carrying capacity or anything we need to ensure uh, all these three type of should of failure should not occur in our system so we will understand which how to skip shape our component by each type of failure for that we need to first understand what is this uh, retiring failure then we will be able to understand how to ensure that our system should not in, is not failing due to tearing of plate then we need to understand what is shearing failure then we will be able to understand how we will ensure that our system is not failing due to shearing of rivet then we will understand what is crushing failure then we will able to ensure uh that our system should not fail uh due to crushing failure and actual design which is ensuring that none of the failure is occurring that design it will be a uh, design which is keeping our system safe as per uh, by ensuring no no type of failure is occurring no file type of failure is occurring so first what we will understand we will understand tearing failure means uh, how to design uh, to avoid tearing failure and whatever load carrying capacity will come to avoid tearing failure that load carrying capacity will be known as tearing load carrying capacity 
and or sometime tearing load carrying capacity is also known as tearing strength so i am discussing uh, how to keep safe our system from tearing failure and whatever load carrying capacity will come to our tearing failure that is known as tearing load carrying capacity to understand uh, load is acting in this plate is p okay if i'll draw p here it is like this okay. now you can see due to this axial force p tensile stress will induce in the plate okay i am not talking about rivet tensile stress will induce in the plate now what happens c c the suppose i am taking this load p this load p is acting in plate a plate a and this load p is acting in plate b okay you can see any load or any load of any plate okay either for plate or load take load of plate a or take load of plate b so suppose i to explain tearing failure i am considering the load of plate a, load of plate a so i am i am i am i am trying to design uh, to avoid tearing failure of plate a okay i am designing my system to avoid tearing failure of plate a so if you are focusing on plate a see the nearest row from this load p and nearest row of rivet from this load p is this okay this now uh now nearest row from this plate is this okay if we are focusing on load of plate b then nearest row will be this but i am right now i am focusing rows of uh, load of plate a uh, load p of plate a and nearest row from nearest row from this load p is this row now what is steering pillar uh in this section tensile stress will induce because this section you can see see the plate uh, imagine the section of plate so th here the section of plate uh, is uh, this load p is acting in perpendicular direction of section of plate so can i say in this section of plate normal stress will induce and since those load this load p is in perpendicular outward direction so can i say in this uh, section tensile stress will induce because load p is in perpendicular outward direction now if this tensile stress will cross permissible value of tensile stress so definitely this system will fail from this section miss tearing will occur from this section from this section and this tearing is occurring in plate a because right now i am considering the load of plate a miss this tearing is occurring in this plate a i am not talking about plate b right now i am taking about plate b now if tearing will occur from this section you can imagine uh this part of plate a this part of plate a because here no other rivets are available so when tearing of plate will occur from this section you can imagine this part of plate a will get separated from the entire system and if this part of plate a is getting separated from entire system means can i say our system will get fail yes sir means and this failure is known as tearing failure so i have explained tearing failure now if we want that this failure should not occur for that we need to ensure that actual tensile stress in this section should be less than permissible tensile stress but for that first we need to calculate actual tensile stress which is coming in this section so to avoid tearing failure first calculate actual tensile stress in this section in which section which is nearest row with respect to this load p okay if you are taking load of plate a this is nearest row if you are taking load of plate b this will be nearest row in that case tear, we need to avoid tearing from this section for that we need to ensure tensile stress in this section should be less than permissible tensile stress of the plate that is different thing okay you can if width and thickness of each plate are same you if you, you can take any plate if you want to, to take uh, plate a load of plate a uh, you, you can take that if you want to avoid uh, tearing of plate b you can uh, uh, do that same result will come if if width and thickness of each plate is same each plate are same so i have taken load of plate a nearest row from this is this if you want no tearing failure should occur in plate a means plate should not get tear from this row okay to for that tensile stress which is coming in this section should be less than permissible tensile stress of the plate now what tensile stress will come in this section so the formula to calculate tensile stress is very simple the formula to calculate tensile stress is very simple sorry 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 the formula to calculate tensile stress is very simple uh, due to axial force how we can calculate tensile stress uh, for that what we need to do axial force divided by area so formula to calculate tensile stress due to axial force is nothing but axial force divided by area now what tensile stress is coming in this section 
सो टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस इट इज कमिंग ऑन द प्लेट सो टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस इन दिस क्रिटिकल सेक्शन ऑफ द प्लेट इज सपोज आई एम डिनोटिंग दैट टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस एज सिग्मा टी सो हाउ वी कैन कैलकुलेट दिस एक्चुअल टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस इन दिस सेक्शन एक्सल फोर्स डिवाइड बाई एरिया नाउ एक्सल फोर्स इज पी डिवाइड बाई एरिया दिस एरिया इज नोन एज टीयरिंग एरिया सो फर्स्ट आई एम राइटिंग द डेफिनेशन टीयरिंग एरिया बिकॉज इफ इट इज फेलिंग फ्रॉम दिस सेक्शन इट विल गेट टीयर now how to calculate tearing area very simple what is the area of this yellow section that will be tearing area and the area of this yellow section will be width into thickness but in in this section effective width is how to calculate total width of the plate is w but in this section three holes are coming three holes are coming so can i say in this case effective width will be w minus 3 dh means we need to subtract diameter of hole because here here we are calculating effective width of plate and effective with in effective with a plate we need to subtract the diameter of hole diameter of hole so can i say in this section right now for this diagram for this diagram effective width will be w minus 3 dh okay w minus 3 dh into into thickness of the plate we are calculating tearing area so thickness of the plate and thickness of which plate plate a because right now we are talking about tearing of plate a If you are taking tearing of plate B, you, you need to use thickness of plate B. But right now you can take any plate because width and thickness of both plate are same. So whether you are taking plate A or plate B, same result will come. Okay. So tearing area will be W minus 3 dH into T. Here in this diagram also you can imagine. Okay. This will be our effective tearing area. and it is equal to w minus 3 dh into thickness of the plate it is equal to w minus 3 dh into thickness of the plate okay so but this formula is coming when number of rivet in each is in this row is 3 if number of rivet in this row is 4 formula will be w minus 4 dh okay right now i am writing general formula but you need not to remember that general formula understand the concept how we can we calculate tearing tensile stress of the plate in critical section for that If you are taking plate A, see the nearest row from this load P and calculate the tearing area of that. So tensile stress will be axial force P divided by tearing area, and that will be effective width of this section, which is W minus 3 dH into thickness of plate. But if number of rivet in this row is 4, it will be W minus 4 dH into T. If number of row rivet in this row is 5, it will be W minus 5 dH into T. Similarly, if number of rivet in this row is small n, then effective width will be W minus n dH into T. So W minus n dH because right now the number of rivet in each row I am denoting as small n. So if number of rivet in each row is same, so number of rivet in this nearest row will also be small n. If number of rivet in each row is a uh, small n, so number of definitely number of rivet in this nearest row will also be small n. So formula will be W minus small n dH into T. So if I will write tearing area in general term when number of rivet in each row are same and that is small n, so this formula will be. Uh, P divided by effective width, and in that case, effective width will be W minus 3 dH into T. But you need not to memorize this formula if you understood this concept. Okay, directly tearing, set this tearing region. Effective width is W minus 3 dH into thickness. If in any case number of rivet in each row is 2, automatically W minus 2 dH into thickness formula will come. So this is tearing area, N tearing stress. Now this tearing stress should be less than to avoid tearing failure this te tearing stress should be less than permissible tearing stress of the plate now from this formula if you will calculate the value of p what limiting value of p is coming it is if you will take equal to sign it will come sigma tp into w minus n dh into t it is the limiting value of p to avoid tearing failure and actual p either should be equal to this or less than this okay okay because actual stress should be less than tearing uh, permissible tensile stress of plate Or, okay, for that uh, actual stress should be less. To ensure actual stress is less, if we are calculating P, P should be less. So whatever limiting value is coming, actual P either should be equal to this or less than this. So can I say in this case, this value is nothing but tearing load carrying capacity of the plate, because uh, this is load carrying capacity to avoid tearing failure. Oh, and in in the other hand, we need to. Uh, 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 avoid more more failures like shearing failure also crushing failure also this is load carrying capacity to to ensure tearing or to to, to say keep our system safe from tearing failure 
सो कैन आई से इट इज द लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी टू एवॉइड टीयरिंग फेलवर एंड द लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी विच इज कमिंग टू एवॉइड टीयरिंग फेलवर इज नोन एज टीयरिंग लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी टीयरिंग लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी लोड आई एम राइटिंग लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी इन शॉर्ट मैनर एज एल सी सी और टीयरिंग स्ट्रेंथ ओके एंड वी डी नॉट टीयरिंग लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी और टीयरिंग स्ट्रेंथ बाई पी सफिक्स टी सफिक्स टी इज फॉर टीयरिंग मीन्स वाट इज पी टी पी टी इज नॉट एक्चुअल लोड पी टी इज ए लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी टू एवॉइड टीयरिंग फेलवर मीन्स इफ यू वॉन्ट नो टीयरिंग फेलवर शुड ऑकर we need to ensure actual p either should be equal to pt or less than pt to avoid tearing load uh, to avoid tearing failure so this pt is known as tearing load capacity if examiner is asking about tearing load capacity directly you can apply this formula and this formula is nothing but sigma tp into w minus n dh into t and how you can memor uh, uh, memorize this formula very easy if whenever you are calculating load carrying capacity to avoid any failure then equate the actual stress with permissible stress so when i am calculating load carrying capacity to avoid tearing failure that is pt that is tearing load carrying capacity or tearing stress how to calculate sorry tearing strength how to calculate that uh, equate sigma t with permissible so it will be sigma tp into tearing area simple if we are calculating tearing load carrying capacity actual p should be equal to this or less than this to avoid tearing failure because it is load carrying capacity to avoid tearing failure and it is sigma t equate sigma t with permissible so sigma tp into tearing area and if you are uh, taking uh, take talk, uh, taking plate a avoiding te tearing of plate a so take nearest row from this load p which is acting in plate a which is this now find the effective tearing uh, with uh, a tearing area of this section which is effective with which is w minus 3 dh into t in general term it will be w minus n dh into t so it is uh, t it is a uh, load carrying capacity to avoid tearing failure that is tearing load capacity very simple okay okay now uh, suppose uh, right now width and thickness of both plate are same you can take any plate okay but if width and thickness of both plate are different both plate are different uh, then take that plate whose width and thickness is less if width and thickness is load legs for plate a design for plate a if width and thickness of for plate b is less design for plate b miss calculate tearing load carrying capacity for plate b okay or if you are getting confused calculate tearing load carrying capacity for plate a also and calculate tearing load carrying capacity of for plate b also and whatever value is coming lesser that will be tearing load carrying capacity of entire system because actual load should be less than capacity okay now we will understand another type of uh, failure that is shearing uh, load carrying capacity means uh, we will uh, find load carrying capacity to avoid shearing of rivets see when this shearing will occur on rivets so now first we will to assist, uh, to find the shearing load carrying capacity or shear strength i will denote shearing load carrying capacity or shear strength by letter p capital p s capital p s is shearing load carrying capacity of the system or shearing strength of the system it is not shear strength which we study in strength of material that is tau it is not tau wave shear i am not talking about shear strength of material shear strength of material is tau wave i am talking about shearing strength of this entire system and in this system we are applying load p so load carrying capacity of this plate is known as uh, strength okay because i am not uh, talking about strength of material i am talking about this system what in this system what is acting load so load carrying capacity of this system is strength and when we are calculating that load carrying capacity to avoid shearing failure that load carrying capacity is known as shearing load carrying capacity or shearing strength means actual loads either should be less than pc or equal to pc to avoid shearing failure but to understand this first we need to understand what is shearing of rivet so first we will understand what is shearing of rivet now what is shearing of rivet uh, you can say imagine this load p is acting in this direction this load p is uh, in this direction in plate b and this load p is acting in this direction in plate a now what this equal and opposite load p will try can i say this equal and opposite uh, load p will try to break this rivet from this plane because what will happen this plate b is trying to move in this direction and this plate a uh, this load p is trying to move plate a in this direction so this portion of rivet will try to move in this direction and this portion of rivet will try to move in this direction and this effect will try to break the rivet in this plane also in plane this if this failure of rivet is occurring 
this failure is known as shearing of rivet why why because you can see this play uh, the in the plane from which this failure is occurring it is parallel to load p and if plane is parallel to load p in that plane the st stress induces will be shear stress means in this plane of rivet shear stress will induce and if we want that this uh, rivet should not fail from this plane means actual shear stress which is coming in this plane should be less than permissible shear stress of the rivet okay so now but when this shearing failure will occur when if one uh, one uh, one rivet is failing due to this shearing failure then this plate a and b will not separate this plate a and b will separate with each other when a shearing of entire rivets are occurring means if shearing of this rivet is occurring also shearing of this rivet is also occurring this shearing of this rivet also occurring shearing of this rivet is also occurring this rivet is also occurring okay so that, that then this plate a and b will get separate with each other so if we want no shearing failure should occur, no failure shearing failure should occur our in our system for that we need to avoid shearing of all the rivet we need to avoid shearing of all the rivet and how we can calculate that for that first we need to calculate shear stress on the rivet now what is the formula to calculate shear stress in the rivet it is actual shear stress in rivet which should be less than or equal to permissible shear stress of rivet that is different thing rivet now formula to calculate shear stress in rivet is force p because due to this force p shear stress is coming divide by total shear area now what is total shear area for that first we need to understand shear area of one rivet shear area of one rivet okay so first i am explaining shear area of one rivet then i will explain what is the total shear area now what will be the shear area of one rivet here you can see uh, for that c in one rivet in one rivet in single rivet suppose this is single rivet from which plane shearing is occurring in this plane shearing is occurring means can i say in this rivet only in one one shear area is coming because here shearing is occurring from one plane of this rivet now shear area of this plane will be pi by 4 d square because it is having circular cross section so area will be pi by 4 d square and if in one rivet if shearing is occurring only from one plane then that shear is known as single shear but but in but in in case of but zone like if, if i will ask here uh, one rivet only focus on one rivet right now shearing is occurring from one plane or two plane so here you can see here shearing will occur from this plane okay here if here if you will see it is but joint but rivet joint but with single strap plate here i am using one strap plate so it is single strap but rivet joint now in single riveted but rivet joint if you will focus in one rivet shearing will occur in this from this plane because this load p will try to uh, fail the rivets of this plate okay and this load p will try to fail the rivets of this plate right now i'm focusing on this plate load p now is, is this load p will try to shear this rivet from this plane because this uh, this rivet or uh, this uh, this rivet is connecting this plate a and this strap plane okay and they are connected with this shear area so here you can see in this rivet only shearing is occurring from one plane so i can say it is also subjected to single shear and in single shear shear area of one rivet will be pi by 4 d square because this area is nothing but pi by 4 d square it is very simple now i will explain what is double shear if i am using double strap plate but rivet joint if i will be using double strap plate but rivet joint in this case you can see a uh, shearing from this plane will also occur and shearing of from this plane will also occur in single rivet right now i am only focusing on one rivet so in this single rivet shearing from two plane is occurring in this single rivet shearing from two plane is occurring so it is known as double shear because this load p is trying to move plate a in this direction and when it will try to move this plate in, in this direction if it is doing shearing failure it will do from this plane also and in this plane also means in this single rivet double shear is occurring and if in single shear double shearing is occurring can i say in that case a shear area of one rivet will be pi by 4 d square into 2 because this shear area is pi by 4 d square this shear area is pi by 4 d square so here single area of one rivet will be equal to in case of single shear pi by 4 d square here a uh, shear area of single rivet i am talking about shear area of one rivet here shear area of one rivet will be pi by 4 d square into 2 because it is subjected to double shear means one rivet is subjected to double shear if i will summarize both of this discussion this discussion can i say 
शेयर एरिया ऑफ वन रिवेट शेयर एरिया ऑफ वन रिवेट विल बी इक्वल टू पाई बाय फोर इंटू पाई बाय फोर डी स्क्वायर इंटू के वेयर कैन आई से के इज इक्वल टू वन फॉर सिंगल शेयर एंड के इज इक्वल टू टू फॉर डबल शेयर सो सिंगल शेयर एरिया ऑफ सिंगल रिवेट विल बी पाई बाय फोर डी स्क्वायर इंटू के वेयर के विल बी इक्वल टू वन फॉर सिंगल शेयर लाइक दिस डायग्राम आर सब्जेक्टेड टू सिंगल शेयर मीन शेयर शेयर एरिया ऑफ वन रिवेट विल बी पाई बाय फोर डी स्क्वायर दिस डायग्राम आर सब्जेक्टेड टू डबल शेयर सो शेयर एरिया ऑफ वन रिवेट विल बी फाइव बाय फोर डी स्क्वायर इंटू टू दिस इज द कंफ्यूजन नाउ हाउ टू कैलकुलेट टोटल शेयर शेयर सेस फॉर दैट वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट टोटल शेयर एरिया नाउ वाट विल बी द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ टोटल शेयर एरिया सो here shearing failure of this system will occur when shearing of all rivet is occurring so can i say total shear area will be shear area of one rivet very simple shear area of one rivet okay into total number of rivets per plate total like in this diagram total number of rivets are 6 but right now i am denoting total number of rivet per plate as capital n so can i say uh, shear area total shear area will be shear area per play of one rivet shear area of one rivet mm -hmm. shear area of one rivet into number of rivets per plate why i am saying per plate if it is left joint it is very easy here total six rivet are coming but if it is butt joint you have to see total number of rivets per plate per plate because because i am taking one diagram of butt joint just for understanding if this is load p uh, if i am taking play, uh, talking about plate a this load p will try to shear the rivets of plate a and if uh, shearing of all rivets of plate a, a is occurring means can i say plate a will get separated from plate b so when i am calculating total shear area we need to focus on the number of rivets in per plate because this load p will try to shear off the uh, rivets which are coming on plate a it will not try to shear of the rivets which are coming on plate b so see the number of rivets per plate which i am denoting as capital n which i am denoting as capital n so it is the expression so what will be the shear stress in re each rivet to avoid shearing of rivet shearing failure uh, this shear stress should be less than permissible shear stress to avoid shearing failure that is the different thing but what will be the expression of shear stress it will be total force p divided by total shear area and what is total shear area for that calculate shear area of one rivet which is pi by 4 d square into k k is equal to 1 for single shear and k is equal to 2 for double shear how to see single shear or double shear that i have explained if it is lap riveted joint it will be generally subjected to single shear if it is butt riveted joint with sing single strap plate it will be subjected to single shear if it is butt riveted joint with double strap plate it will be subjected to double shear and by this diagram also you can visualize this And for single shear k equal to one, and for double shear k equal to two. Into it is shear area of one rivet. Into total shear area means number of rivet per plate, which I am denoting as capital A. Like for this diagram, number of rivet per plate for, for uh, per plate is six. Okay. Now to avoid shearing failure, this actual shear stress must be less than equal to permissible shear stress of the rivet material because it is coming on rivet. Now if from this equation, if we calculate limiting value of p, it will come. tau p limiting value of p it will come tau p into c tau p into pi by 4 d square into k which is shear area of one rivet into capital n that is shear area of all the rivet and it must be it is the limiting value of p means can i say to avoid shearing failure actual p either should be equal to this value or less than this value now to avoid shearing failure actual p should either be equal to this value or less than this value so can i say this value is nothing but shearing load carrying capacity of the plate or shearing strength of the plate which i am denoting as ps because actual piece should be less than equal to this or uh, should, or equal to this so it is shearing load carrying capacity of the system means shearing uh, load carrying capacity to avoid shearing failure okay so if i will directly write the expression of shearing load carrying capacity you can directly write uh, if we are writing the expression of shearing load carrying capacity means load carrying capacity to avoid shearing failure so whenever you are writing load expression of load carrying capacity 
equate actual stress with per, per, two permissible stress because we are calculating load carrying capacity and if we are calculating shearing load carrying capacity equate tau by with tau p because we are calculating load carrying capacity actual load should be less than this or equal to this to avoid shearing failure tau p into total shear area because when shear of uh, shearing of all rivet will occur then system will get fail how to calculate total shear area first calculate shear area of one rivet which is pi by 4 d square into k k is 1 for single shear k is 1 2 for several shear into number of rivet per plate which i am denoting as capital m okay so it is the formula to calculate shearing load can very easy to understand and uh, remember why very easy because when we are calculating shearing load carrying capacity means actual shear, to avoid shearing failure actual tau should be less than tau p and when we are calculating tau shearing load capacity we will equate tau with tau p so i am equating tau with tau p because i am calculating capacity into total shear area shear area of single rivet i have already explained you can directly remember this pi by 4 d square k k is 1 for single shear k is 2 for double shear into total number of rivet okay so it is load carrying capacity to avoid shearing failure okay now we will discuss one more load carrying capacity of this system crushing load carrying capacity or which is also known as crushing strength of the material okay i will denote crushing load carrying capacity or crushing strength as pc crushing load carrying capacity or crushing strength as pc okay now what is crushing strength or crushing load carrying capacity it is load carrying capacity of the system to avoid crushing failure it is the load carrying capacity of the system to avoid crushing failure for that first need to uh, first we need to understand what is crushing failure or what is crushing stress so here first i am explaining what is crushing stress now what is crushing stress what will happen here load p is acting in this direction here load p is acting in this direction load p is acting like this load p is acting like this now thickness of is plate is t thickness of is plate is t now suppose i am explaining crushing stress or crushing failure by understanding uh, by taking plate b or load of plate b so we are, i am explaining crushing stress by taking plate b so you know not to bother about plate a focus on plate a b now what will happen what you will just try to imagine when i will try to pull this plate a b in this direction when i will try to pull this plate a b in this direction one it will try to fail this rivet from this plane which i already explained this failure is known as shearing failure apart from this when i you need to imagine when i will try to pull this plate b in this direction it will try to uh, suppose i uh, first i'm making the diagram suppose uh, i am drawing the di rivet diagram of this rivet and uh, this thickness is t which is thickness of plate b right now thickness of both plate are same that is different thing this is the thickness of the plate that is thickness of plate b because i am explaining this crushing stress by taking the diagram of plate b you can also understand this by taking the diagram of plate a but right now you can take any plate because thickness of both plate are same so i am taking plate p okay now if i will try if this p is trying to pull this plate b in this direction so what we will do you can imagine in the half portion of this rivet in the half portion of this rivet this is complete rivet and uh, if, if this is complete rivet and this is the half portion of this side of rivet so try to imagine this force p, when this plate force p will try to pull this plate b in this direction plate b will apply a compressive strain in half portion of this rivet up to thickness t because thickness of plate b is t so up to thickness t in the half portion of rivet plate b will apply a crushing stress you can imagine this uh, this is my rivet uh, this is suppose thickness of plate b if i will try to if i will try to push play, pull plate b in this direction one it will try to break this rivet from this plane which is shearing failure another it will try to apply a uh, it will try apply a crushing or compressive stress in half portion of this rivet you can imagine this in half portion of this rivet and this stress is known as crushing stress or compressive stress in rivet generally we denote this stress as crushing stress and okay and if this crushing stress is uh, crossing a per per permissible value which is known as permissible crushing stress crushing of rivet will occur 
and if crushing of all rivet is occurring means our system will get fail so to avoid uh, crushing failure we need to ensure crushing stress which is coming in this plane should be less than less than less than should be less than permissible crushing stress for that first we need to understand how to calculate crushing stress uh, crushing stress will come in half portion of the rivet this this load p will try to plate a suppose it is plate a in this direction so it will apply a crushing stress in this side of half portion of rivet okay but we will consider any one plate and we will consider that plate whose thickness is less but right now thickness of both plate is same okay now how to calculate crushing stress for that first we need to calculate crushing area of single rivet okay now here you can see this crushing stress is coming in curved surface and whenever uh, if any stress is coming in curved surface uh, to find the effective area we take projected area that thing you have already studied when you are were studying thin cylinder in uh, thin pressure vessel in uh, uh, strength of material subject uh, if any pressure is coming in curved surface to calculate what total force is coming due to that pressure formula to calculate that is pressure into projected area like suppose if i want to calculate due to this crushing stress what total force is coming okay in horizontal direction because uh, it, it will come in horizontal direction so for that we need to take projected area now projected area of this portion because this crushing stress is coming in this portion so projected area of this portion will be this this okay and it will be like rectangle here also you can imagine projected area of this portion will be this if i will draw this projected area separately it will be like this okay in which this dimension is equal to d and this will be equal to thickness of plate b because right now i'm explaining this by taking plate b if you are explaining this by taking plate a it will be thickness of plate a okay so right now right now thickness of both plate are same so d is the diameter of rivet and t is the thickness of plate b or you can simply say thickness of plate so this is projected area and this projected area is a rectangle which is nothing but d into t so this is known as crushing area of one rivet of one rivet now if, with exam point of view uh, you, you you don't want to draw this diagram again and again so for exam point of view you can directly remember crushing area of one rivet will be dt simple projected dt where d is diameter of rivet and t is thickness of plate which plate whose thickness is less if thickness of both plate are same you can take any thickness okay because uh, uh, the thickness thickness plate whose thickness is less that will be that will be leak, weaker for crushing because area will come lesser okay so we'll take a uh, calculate crushing area of weaker plate weaker plate weaker because uh, here thickness is coming and which will be weaker whose thickness is less but right now thickness of both are plate are same so dt is crushing area of one rivet and if you understood crushing area of one or one rivet you can easily calculate crushing stress now what is crushing stress crushing stress on rivet on rivet i am explaining and uh, noting crushing stress on a rivet as sigma c and it will be total force p divided by total crushing area total crushing area now how to calculate total crushing area total crushing area when the crushing failure of this system will occur when crushing of all rivet is occurring because if crushing or of all rivet will occur then only then uh, our plate a will get separated from plate b okay and uh, if we don't want that plate a should go to separated from plate b due to crushing means we need to avoid crushing of all the rivet so total crushing area formula to calculate total crushing area is is total crushing area is very simple total crushing area is crushing area of one rivet of one rivet into we need to avoid crushing of all the rivets into number of rivets per plate per plate again we need to see total number of rivet per plate which i am denoting as capital s and you can remember the formula to calculate crushing area of one rivet crushing area formula to calculate crushing area of one rivet is d into t where d is diameter of rivet and t is thickness of plate which thickness which is lesser if it is lesser for plate a take thickness of plate a if it is lesser for plate b take thickness of plate b 
uh, if thickness of both plate is same, you can take any thickness into total number of rivet. And if you will do so, the expression of crushing stress will come P divided by total crushing area and crushing area of one rivet is DT into total number of rivet per. Now to avoid crushing failure, this actual crushing stress should be less than or equal to permissible crushing stress of the rivet which I am denoting as sigma CP. To avoid this failure, actual crushing stress should be less than crushing, uh, crushing stress of the uh, crushing permissible crushing permissible crushing stress of the rivet which I am denoting as sigma c. So this sigma c should be less than sigma cp. Now if I will calculate limiting L of p, it will come sigma cp into total crushing area that is dt into n, and actual value of p either should be equal to this or less than this to avoid crushing failure. So can I say this expression is nothing but load carrying capacity to avoid crushing failure? load carrying capacity to avoid crushing failure which is known as crushing load carrying capacity or crushing strength which I am denoting as PC. I am denoting crushing load carrying capacity as PC. Okay, so PC is not actual load, PC is crushing load carrying capacity. Means to avoid crushing failure, actual load should be equal to PC or less than PC. Okay, so if I will write the expression of PC that is crushing load carrying capacity separately. So expression of PC will be when we are calculating the expression of load carrying capacity equate actual stress with permissible and right now I am talking uh, about crushing load carrying capacity in which crushing stress will come. So to calculate crushing load carrying capacity we will equate crushing stress that is sigma C with permissible crushing stress that is sigma CP. So we'll, uh, if we are calculating crushing load carrying capacity we will equate sigma C with sigma CP. Okay. So we uh, okay into crushing area. And what will be total crushing area? Because crushing failure will occur when crushing of all rivet is occurring. So we need to calculate crushing area of all rivet per of all rivet per plate. For that, first write the expression of crushing area of one rivet, which is dt into total crushing area. To calculate total crushing area, we will multiply this with total number of rivet per plate. So it is the expression of crushing load capacity. If you understand this, you can easily write this expression. On, okay. Only you need to remember when you are writing the expression of load carrying capacity, equate actual stress with permissible. It is not actual load. It is load carrying capacity to avoid crushing failure. Means actual load should be either equal to PC or less than PC to avoid crushing failure. So very simple. So I am uh, first summarizing all this discussion. Uh, if you want to avoid tearing of uh, tearing failure, that load carrying capacity is known as tearing load carrying capacity. To calculate tearing load carrying capacity, equate sigma t with permissible into tearing area how to calculate tearing area for that take nearest row of uh, nearest row with respect to this loss p if you are talking about plate a i am dis discussing this but when number of rivet in each row are same remember that nearest row with respect to this load p for plate is this now area of this uh, effective area of plate in this section will be tearing area which is w minus 3 dh into t if number of rivet in each row is small and this area will be w minus n dh into t Okay, so it is tearing load carrying capacity. First, I calculate actual tensile stress, which will be, should be less than permissible tensile stress. And uh, uh, if, we, if we will take equal to sign, the value of P will be load carrying capacity to ever tearing failure, which expression will be this. Similarly, shearing load carrying capacity. If you are calculating shearing load carrying capacity, I am denoting that as PC. If you are calculating load carrying capacity to ever shearing failure, first equate tau with tau P. So it will be tau P because we are calculating load carrying capacity. Means actual load P should be either equal to this or less than this into total shear area because uh, shearing uh, failure will occur when shearing of all rivet is occurring. Now what will be the expression of total shear area? First write the shear area of one rivet. It will be pi by 4 d square into k where k is 1 for single shear. For lap joint, generally for lap joint or single step butt joint, uh, one rivet will be subjected to single shear. k is equal to 2 for double shear. Generally for double strap butt joint, for double strap butt joint, uh, one rivet will be subjected to double shear into number of rivet per plate. Okay, so it is total shear area. Now, uh, what is crushing load carrying capacity? It is the load carrying capacity to avoid crushing failure. And when we are calculating load carrying capacity to avoid crushing failure, that is crushing load carrying capacity, uh, we will equate sigma C with permissible crushing stress, that is sigma C P, into total crushing area. Because when crushing failure will occur, when crushing of all rivets is occurring. And how to calculate total crushing area for that crushing area of one rivet? You need to remember this. It is dt into number of rivet per plate, which is capital. Okay, now important point is actual load carrying capacity. Now, what will be the expression of actual load carrying capacity? Now, can I say actual load P should be less than or equal to PT? Actual load P 
should be less than equal to PC, uh, PC, uh, sorry, PS. PS is shearing load carrying capacity. Actual P should be less than equal to PC. So, if we want to avoid all type of failure, actual P should be less than equal to PT also, PS also, or PC also. So, can I say actual load P should be less than equal to minimum of PT, PC, PS, and PC? Because suppose if it is 1000, it is 600 and it is 500. We need to ensure actual load P should be less than 100 also, should be less than equal to 600 also, should be less than equal to 500 also. If I am ensuring actual load P is less than equal to 500, then it will be automatically less than, it will be automatically less than 600, it will automatically will be less than 1000. So, can I say actual load P should be less than equal to minimum of load carrying capacity which is coming by considering all type of failure. All right, means minimum of PT, PCS and PC. Whatever failure you are considering, calculate uh, from that failure, to failure criteria, calculate load carrying capacity. Actual load carrying capacity will be minimum of uh, minimum of load carrying velocity which is coming by considering all type of failure because can I say uh, uh, now uh, it is actual load P actual load P should be less than equal to this means whatever minimum value between these three PT PS and PC actual should load P should be less than equal to this means can if I will equate uh, use equal to sign that will be load carrying capacity mean can I say this expression is the expression of actual load carrying capacity means actual load carrying capacity will be uh, minimum of load carrying capacity by com which are coming by considering all type of failure. For this case, when number of rivet in each row are same, we have discussed three type of failure by to have a tearing failure, load carrying capacity is tearing load carrying capacity that is PT. To add shearing failure, load carrying capacity is shearing load carrying capacity which I am denoting as PS. To add crushing failure, load carrying capacity is PC which I am uh, crushing uh, uh, load carrying capacity is crushing load carrying capacity which I am denoting is PC and actual load carrying capacity will be minimum of PT, PS and PC. It is load carrying capacity actual, means actual P either should be equal to this or less than this. So, it is the expression of actual load carrying capacity. So, if examiner is asking tearing load carrying capacity, calculate PT, crushing load carrying capacity, calculate PC, crushing load carrying capacity, calculate PS. If actual load carrying capacity, calculate load carrying capacity by considering all type of failure and whatever minimum value is coming, that will be the expression of actual load carrying capacity. Means actual load P should be equal to this or less than this to avoid all type of failure. Now, sometime examiner asks efficiency of riveted joint. So, I am writing the formula of efficiency of riveted joint. What is efficiency of riveted joint? It is the ratio of low actual load carrying capacity and how to calculate actual load carrying capacity that I have already explained. To the, to the load carrying capacity without row, without holes and rivets. If in the plate we uh, no hole and no rivets are coming, then whatever load carrying capacity will come that take that load carrying capacity below side and take actual load carrying capacity above side. And this ratio is known as efficiency of the riveted joint. Okay. Now if in, in a plate uh, no rivet and no hole is coming, so it will be the uh, diagram will be like this. Okay. Uh, width of the plate is W and thickness of this plate is T. If thickness of both plate are same, you can take any plate. And if thickness of both plate are different, that take uh, thickness and width of both plate are th th different, then take that plate whose re the product of width and thickness is less. Product of width and thickness is less. But right now thickness of both plate are same. Now the load carrying capacity for this case, whatever load carrying capacity is coming for this case, can I say that load carrying capacity will be load carrying capacity without rivet and hole. Because in this plate uh, we have taken neither rivet nor and no hole we have taken. Now what? In this case, in this case, only tensile stress will come in the plate, which will be same at, at everywhere. Because in this plate you can see F stress in a uh, uh, stress in each section are same. Stress in each section are same. So and what will be the expression of this tensile stress? I am calculating load carrying capacity. Expression of load carrying capacity without rivet. And holes. So in this case, only tensile stress is coming, and its expression will be axial force P load P divided by tens a, a, a tearing area. You can also say, and it will be equal to W into T because no rivet and hole is coming, and this should be less than equal to permissible tensile stress because here tensile stress is coming only. So actual P should be less than equal to sigma T P into W T. So can I say if no rivet and holes are present in the plate? 
then load carrying capacity will be equal to this because actual load should be equal to this or less than this okay you if you want you can directly remember this formula m rating so this is coming sigma tp into wt so if no rivet and hole are present then load carrying capacity will be only tensile stress will come and if you are writing the expression of load carrying capacity so equate tensile stress with permissible so it will be sigma tp into tearing area and if no rivet and hole are present tearing area will be wt okay okay and take that tearing that product of w calculate take w product of w and t for that plate which w product of w and t are less if it is less for plate a take wt product for plate a if wt a, this product is less for plate b that wt product take wt product for plate b okay but generally we examiner will give width and thickness of each plate exactly same so you can take any any product of w, w you can take product of w into, into e for any plate w into t for any plate so if i write the expression of efficiency of the joint i am denoting efficiency as eta it is actual load carrying capacity which uh, i already explained how to calculate upon load carrying capacity without rivet and hole you can directly remember this expression it is sigma tp that is permissible tensile stress and if no uh, no rivet and hole is coming then a effective area will be width into thickness okay. now uh, if you are remembering this formula directly and using this formula directly uh, if you are taking sigma tp in mega pascal or newton per mm square and taking this area in mm square so below term will come in newton so ensure that above term is also in newton so this efficiency will come now but suppose examiner is asking not actual efficiency he is asking tearing efficiency so if i will you will write the expression of tearing efficiency eta t is tearing efficiency below side will take uh, load capacity without rivet without hole which is w, sigma tp into wt above said we will take tearing load carrying capacity of the system okay if examiner is asking crushing efficiency but generally examiner will ask actual efficiency but if it is asking crushing efficiency above said take crushing load carrying capacity below said term will be same sigma tp into wt means load carrying capacity without rivet without hole if examiner is asking shearing load carrying capacity i am denoting as eta s it will be above said take shearing load carrying capacity below said term will be sigma tp into wt and what will be actual efficiency it will be minimum of eta t eta c eta s which will come exactly equal to this means actual load carrying capacity below side term will remain same load carrying capacity without rivet and without hole so this is the analysis of riveted joint under axial force p when number of rivets in each row are same and in this case three types of fever are important or you can say three types of load carrying capacity are important tearing load capacity which is coming due to ever tearing fever crushing load carrying capacity pc which is coming to ever crushing fever and shearing load carrying capacity that is ps which is coming to avoid crushing failure and how to calculate this three load carrying capacity you need to understand and minimum of load carrying capacity a minimum of pt pc ps will be actual load carrying capacity and act ratio of actual load carrying capacity upon load carrying capacity without rivet and hole whose expression is sigma tp into wt is known as efficiency of riveted joint okay so student now we'll discuss some questions this question is msq means multiple select question means more than one option can be correct in this question why now what this question is saying two flat plate is subjected to tensile force p are connected together by means of single riveted lap joint as shown in figure Sing, single riveted means uh, number of rows of rivet will be one okay and diagram is already given okay so it is you can see from the diagram it is single row riveted joint means number of row is one now what what is uh, number of rivet in each row it is 3 through this diagram you can conclude and what is total number of rivet per plate it is also 3 because only one row is involved okay now diameter of rivet is diameter of rivet is 10 mm so diameter of this diagram i have drawn separately diameter of rivet is given in the question it is 10 mm which i am denoting as small d okay diameter of rivet hole is also given that is dh which is 11 mm so diameter of rivet hole is 11 mm now why width of each plate is 150 mm and thickness of each plate is 6 mm i denoting width of each plate with by w letter w and thickness as t so width of each plate is given it is 150 mm and thickness of each plate is also given it is 6 mm okay now allowable tensile stress of the plate is 100 mega pascal that is permissible or allowable tensile stress of plate is given that is sigma tp it is 100 mega pascal okay 
uh, we will use this parameter to find tearing load carrying capacity of the plate. Similarly, allowable shear stress of the rivet is given that is tau p. It is 70 mega Pascal, 70 mega Pascal. And allowable crushing stress of rivet is given that is sigma cp which is 150 mega Pascal. 150 mega Pascal. Okay. Now, which one or more of the following options are correct? We have to focus on or option because it is MSQ. First, uh, 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 first option saying crushing load carrying capacity is 27 kN, B, shearing load carrying capacity is this, tearing load carrying capacity is this, and actual load carrying capacity is this. Means we have to find uh, first, ultimately we have to find crushing load carrying capacity, second, tearing load, uh, shearing load carrying capacity, third, crushing load carrying capacity and along with that we have to also find actual load carrying capacity of the system. Now whenever we want to find actual load carrying capacity for that we need to find crushing, shearing and tearing load carrying capacity means to find this we need to find these all three parameters. So automatically whether uh, examiner is asking this, this or this not asking or not uh, to find actual load carrying capacity we need to find all these three types of load carrying capacity. Okay. So first I am finding crushing load carrying capacity. Now, what is the formula to calculate crushing load carrying capacity? Uh, first, I am finding crushing load carrying capacity, which I am denoting as PC. Crushing load carrying capacity means load carrying capacity to avoid crushing failure. And whenever we are finding load carrying capacity to avoid crushing failure, we will equate sigma C to sigma CP, that is permissible crushing stress. So, since we are finding load carrying capacity, we will equate sigma C to sigma CP into total crushing area. Now, what will be the expression of total crushing area that I already explained? D total crushing area will be first crushing area of one rivet and crushing area of one rivet will be small d into thickness of each plate. Whenever thickness of each plate is same. If thickness of both plate is different, then that uh, take that thickness which is whose value is lesser. So, it is the crushing area of one rivet into and when crushing failure will occur, when crushing of all rivets is occurring. So, in this crushing area of one rivet, we have multiplied total number of rivet per plate. Okay, in lab joint, there is no confusion. Here, total number of rivet in per plate, if you, I am denoting that as capital N. I am denoting total number of rivet per plate by capital N, which is 3 in this case. Okay, okay. by counting also you can say, total number of rivet per plate is 3. So, total crushing area will be crushing area of one rivet into total number of rivet per plate, that is 3. Now, permissible crushing stress is given in the question. Permissible crushing stress is 150 mega Pascal. Diameter of rivet is 10 mm. Thickness of each plate is 6. And number of rivet per plate is 3. Through this uh, calculation, we will get the value of crushing load carrying capacity. Means actual load I should be either equal to this or less than this to avoid crushing failure. Okay. And if you will simplify this, it will come 27,000 Newton. You can check calculation in Newton. If you will convert this in kilonewton, it will be 27 kilonewton. So, first examiner is asking about crushing load carrying capacity which we have calculated and it is coming 27,000 newton or 27 kilonewton. So, first I am checking this option. Option A, crushing load carrying capacity is 27 kilonewton. Same answer we got. So, option A is correct. Now, we will calculate shear load carrying capacity or shearing load carrying capacity. I am denoting shearing load carrying capacity. Second, we are calculating shearing load carrying capacity PS. I am denoting shearing load carrying capacity with letter PS. Now, shearing load carrying capacity means load carrying capacity to avoid shearing failure. And whenever we are calculating load carrying capacity to avoid shearing failure, we will first equate actual shear stress to permissible shear stress because we are calculating load carrying capacity. So, we will equate tau with tau p because we are calculating load carrying capacity. It is permissible shear stress into total shear area. For that, we will calculate shear area of one rivet. Now, how to calculate shear area of one rivet? Formula to calculate shear area of one rivet is pi by 4 d square, where d is diameter of rivet into k, where k is number of shear. Uh, if it is single shear, k will be 1. If it is double shear, k will be 2. So, formula to calculate shear area of one rivet is pi by 4 d square into k. And here, value of k is 1 or 2. For that, see, it is in sig subjected to single shear. One rivet is subjected to single shear or double shear. So, here if you will see, uh, this load P and this load P will try to shear off this rivet from this plane. Means in this diagram, we can see one rivet is, uh, in, in one rivet, shear is, uh, shearing is occurring only in one plane. Means can I say this rivet is subjected to single shear? 
and since it is subjected to single shear value of k will be 1 so here shear of one rivet will be pi by 4 d square into 1 because it is subjected to single shear so it is one shear area of one rivet into when shearing failure will occur when shearing of all rivet is occurring so to calculate total shear area we will multiply shear area of one rivet with number of rivet per plate and here number of rivet per plate is 3 so into 3 or you can also say total number of rivet okay now permissible shear stress is given in the question it is 70 mega pascal into pi by 4 d square diameter of rivet is 10 mm into 1 into 3 and through calculation we will get the value of shearing load carrying capacity of this plate and after calculation it is coming you can check calculation it is coming 616493.36 newton if you will convert this in kilonewton it will be 16.493 kilometer okay so shearing load carrying capacity of those this plate is coming Shearing load carrying capacity of this plate is coming 16.493 kilo newton. So I am checking the option. Option B. Shear load carrying capacity 16.493 kilo newton. Same answer we got. So option B is also correct. Now we have to calculate tearing load carrying capacity of this system. Tearing load carrying capacity means load carrying capacity to avoid tearing failure. Suppose I am denoting that load carrying capacity by letter P T what is pt it is tearing load carrying capacity of the system now how to calculate tearing load carrying capacity if number of rivet in each row are same and here if only one row is involved means number of rivet in each row will be same so in that case to calculate tearing load carrying capacity how to proceed uh, first uh, consider any plate suppose this plate is plate a this plate is plate b suppose i am talking about tearing of plate a means i am talking about tearing load carrying capacity to avoid uh, tearing of plate a okay why you are not talking to plate b if width and thickness of both plate are same, you can take any plate, whether plate A, whether plate B, it is your will. So I am explaining this tearing load carrying capacity by taking plate A. Now in plate A, this load P is acting. So see, this load P is acting. So which row of rivet is nearest to those load P? Is in this at present only one row is involved. So definitely this row will be nearest to load P. Okay, but when number of rows are more then see uh, which row is nearest to this load p so this row of rivet is nearest to uh, this uh, this load p so if you want to avoid tearing failure we need to avoid tearing of this row of rivet tearing of plate from this row okay because if tearing of rivet from this row will occur means it will tear like this i am explaining this by taking the example of plate a means plate a is tearing from this plane so what will happen uh, this side of plate a no other rivet are coming so if this plate will tear from this side can i say this portion of plate a will get separated from the entire system so if you want to avoid tearing failure we need to avoid tearing from this plane okay now to avoid tearing from this plane actual tensile stress in this plane should be less than or equal to permissible tensile stress okay and whenever we are calculating load carrying capacity we will equate sigma 2 to sigma tp that is permissible tensile stress okay so since we are calculating tearing load carrying capacity means actual load should be either equal to this or less than this to avoid tearing failure first we will equate sigma t with sigma tp that is permissible tensile stress of the plate into tearing area and since we are considering tearing of this plane so we will multiply tear area of this plane okay now area of this plane how we will calculate effective width into thickness now effective width of this plane is w minus in this plane three hole is coming because to calculate effective width of the plate we need to subtract the uh, subtract the whole diameter because in plate we are making hole so here effective width will be w minus 3 dh because 3 hole is coming 3 dh okay and this formula if uh, if you remember this formula it was like w minus n dh where as n is number of rivet in each row because right now we are discussing the case where number of rivet in each row are same so here only one row is involved and in that row number of rivet is 3 so it will be w minus 3 dh but don't memorize that formula understand the concept into thickness of the plate okay so through this formula we will get the daring load carrying capacity of this system it will come sigma tp is uh, permissible tensile stress is 100 into width of the plate is 150 minus 3 diameter of hole is 11 into thickness of the plate is 6 mm you can check so 
so we'll get the value of tearing load carrying capacity of this plate and after calculation it is coming 100 into 150 minus 3 dh into thickness it is coming you can check calculation 70200 newton if you'll convert this in in kilo newton it will come 70.2 kilo newton okay so tearing load carrying capacity of this component is 70.2 kilo newton okay so third option is asking tearing load carrying capacity which has come 70.2 kilo newton same answer we got okay so option c is also correct now in option d we have to find actual load carrying capacity and what will be the expression of actual load carrying capacity okay fourth Ac we have to calculate actual load carrying capacity and actual load carrying capacity will be minimum of load carrying capacity which are coming by considering different type of failure means actual load carrying capacity will be minimum of pt pc and ps and right now a minimum value of out of pt pc and ps is it is 27 kN, it is 16 out of this two this is minimum now 16.493 70 but this is overall minimum value so can i say in this case overall magnetic ma load carrying capacity will be 16.493 kN. so actual load carrying capacity of this system will be 16.493 kN. okay because it is minimum of all the load carrying capacity which are considering coming by considering different type of failure so actual load carrying capacity is 16.493 but exam option d is saying it is 70.2 means uh, option d instead of taking minimum value option d has taken maximum value but actual load carrying capacity will be minimum of this three value which is 16.493 kN. means here option d is incorrect means correct option for this question are a b and c correct option th of this question are a b and c okay so student we will solve one more question what this question is saying two flat plate subjected to tensile force p are connected together by means of double riveted double riveted means two double row double strap butt joint means two strap plate is involved okay as shown in figure diagram is given okay double strap means in both side of the pla main plate uh, we will use a strap or cover plate so it is double strap okay and double row means in each plate two rows of rivet will be involved you can see okay don't see in uh, if it is butt weld see number of row Whenever you are seeing number of row, number of row per plate. So number of row in each plate is two. That's why this is double row riveted joint and double step because two step plate we have used but joint. As shown in figure diagram is given. Now diameter of rivet is 15 mm and diameter of rivet hole is 16 mm. I'm writing here. Diameter of rivet is given. It is 15 mm and diameter of rivet hole is that is DH is 16 mm. Okay. Now width of each plate is 250 mm and thickness of each plate is 10 mm so width of each plate is 250 mm i am denoting width of each plate by letter w and thickness of each plate is 10 mm it is given in the question so it is thickness of each plate which i am denoting as p and thickness of each plate is given it is 10 mm it is 10 mm okay now uh, allowable tensile stress of the plate is 100 megapascal allowable tensile stress means sigma tp is given it is 100 megapascal and allowable shear stress of the rivet that is tau p is also given it is 80 megapascal and allowable crushing stress of the rivet that is sigma cp is given it is 120 megapascal okay so why we have to find first load carrying capacity of, of this component means to find load carrying capacity first we need to find tearing load carrying capacity crushing load carrying capacity and shearing load carrying capacity and minimum of pt ps and pc will be actual load carrying capacity of the system then we have also find we need to also find efficiency of this riveted joint so first objective is to find uh, actual load carrying capacity of this system suppose i am denoting that as plcc and our sub sec second objective is to find efficiency of this riveted joint okay now to find actual load carrying capacity we need to find tearing shearing and crushing load carrying capacity because permissible tensile stress permissible shear stress and permissible crushing stress is are given in the question and here number of rivet in each row are same okay so which we have already discussed so we can easily find this pt pc at ps if we here you will write what is the number of row 
I'm denoting number of ray, row as small n, and here you can see number of row is two. What is total number of rivet? Uh, what is total number of rivet? Total number of rivet per plate. Per plate. So if you see total number of rivet per plate in each plate, total number of rivet is one, two, three, four, five, six. Even by counting, you can calculate this. Total number of rivet in each plate is total number of rivet in each plate is six. Six. Total number of rivet per plate is six. Okay. So total number of rivet, which I'm denoting with capital letter capital L, is six. Okay. Or I think I'm denoting number of row as small m. Okay. It will not matter whatever notation you are making. It is small m, which is two. Okay. But you need not to memorize formula. You can, if you understood concept, you can easily write. Okay. By doing this diagram, you can say number of row is two. Total number of rivet per plate is six. Number of rivet in each row is three. Number of rivet in each row is three. Now, first I am calculating uh, shearing load carrying capacity or crushing load. Sorry, shearing load carrying capacity or shearing strength of this component. This load carrying capacity to cal to avoid shearing failure of the system. Now, to avoid shearing failure, when we are calculating shearing load carrying capacity, first since we are calculating load carrying capacity uh, to avoid shearing failure, first we will equate actual shear stress with permissible shear stress. Means we will equate actual tau. To permissible shear stress that is tau p. Now in this we will multiply total shear area. Now to calculate total shear area, first we will calculate shear area of one rivet. Now formula to calculate shear area of one rivet is pi by four d square into k into k, where k is which is one for single shear and k is two for double shear. So first we need to see one rivet is subjected to single shear or double shear. So it is double strip plate blood weld and in sorry butt joint. In double strip but rivet region, always one rivet will be subjected to double shear. Okay, and we can check also it is double strip plate but joint. So if you focus on any of the rivet, suppose I am focusing in any of the rivet, this load P will try to shear off this rivet from this plane also and from this other plane also. So from this diagram you can calculate in one rivet shearing is occurring from two plane means it is subjected to double shear. Yes, sir. And since it is subjected to double shear, can I say here value of k will be equal to two? So here k is two because it is subjected to double shear. So it is shear area of one rivet. Now what will be the total shear area? So when shearing failure will occur, when shearing of all rivet in each plate is occurring. So to calculate total shear area, here we need to multiply number of rivet per plate. Okay, be careful with butt joint. Don't see overall total number of rivet of entire system. See number of rivet per plate because when shearing of all this rivet will occur of this plate. Suppose this plate is plate A, this plate A will get separated. So here number of rivet per plate is six. So we will multiply this with six. So it is shearing load carrying capacity of this system. Now how much it is coming? Tau P is permissible shear stress which is eighty into pi by four d square where d is diameter of rivet which is fifteen mm into k is two because it is subjected to double shear. Into number of rivet per plate is six. Even by counting, you can count this. Okay, so we'll get the exp uh, value of shearing load carrying capacity of this system, and it is coming pi by four d square into two into six into eighty. It is coming one six nine six four six k newton. If you write in kilo newton, it will come one sixty nine. 0.646 kilo newton. So it is the expression of shearing load carrying capacity of this system. Okay. Now second, second we we are finding tearing load carrying capacity because to find a uh, actual load carrying capacity we need to find all shearing, crushing, and tearing load carrying capacity of this system. So first I'm now, now second I'm finding tearing load carrying capacity. Now to find tearing load carrying capacity, tearing load carrying capacity means load carrying capacity to avoid tearing failure. Okay, how we'll proceed? For that, first consider uh, consider uh, that row. Suppose uh, suppose uh, first consider tearing failure by taking any plate. Suppose I am taking about talking about tearing of plate A. Why sir? No, for not plate B. If with or with and thickness of both plate are same, you can take uh, or consider any plate to find tearing load carrying capacity of the system. So I am taking plate A. Now, if you are taking plate A in plate A, this load P is acting. So here we need to search for that row which is nearest to, to with respect to this load P. Now nearest row with respect to this load P is this row. 
so if we want to avoid tearing failure of the system we need to avoid tearing of plate fr a from this row if we want to avoid tearing failure of the system we need to avoid tearing of plate a from this row okay because if this plate a will get tear from this plane what will happen in this in this side because we are talking about plate a so in this side of plate a no other rivet are coming so what will happen if this plate is tearing from this plate this uh, this part of plate a will get separated from entire system okay so if you want to avoid tearing of this system or you can say tearing of plate a we need to avoid tearing failure of from this plane okay and if you want to avoid tearing failure from this plane how we can calculate that tearing load carrying city for that since we are calculating tearing load carrying city first equate sigma t with sigma tp because we are calculating load carrying city into tearing area and tearing area will be, will be area of plate from this plane because we are calculating tearing load density to avoid tearing from this plane now if what will be effective area of plate in this plane first calculate effective width and effective width will be total width is w but in this plane three hole is coming so in this plane to calculate effective width of this plate we need to what we need to do we need to subtract three dh with w because three hole is coming in this plane so effective width in this plane will be w minus 3 dh okay into thickness of plate a okay which i am denoting as small t okay now what is the value of sigma tp that is permissible tensile stress of the plate it is 100 mega pascal into w width of the plate which is 250 mm you can check minus 3 dh dh is diameter of hole which is 16 mm into small t small t is thickness of plate which is 10 mm so if you will calculate you will get the value of tearing load carrying capacity of this plate means load carrying capacity to avoid tearing failure and after solving it is coming 250 minus 3 dh into 10 into 100 it is coming 202 triple zero newton in kilo newton it will be 202 kilo newton okay so it is tearing load carrying capacity of this system now third we are calculating shearing load carrying capacity or sorry we have already calculated shearing load carrying capacity now we are calculating crushing load carrying capacity means load carrying capacity to avoid crushing failure now we are whenever we are calculating load carrying capacity to avoid crushing area so first we will equate actual crushing stress that is sigma c to with sigma cp because we are calculating load carrying capacity to avoid crushing failure so first i am uh, uh, equating sigma c to sigma cp that is permissible crushing stress into total crushing area now how to calculate total crushing area first write the expression of crushing area of one rivet and expression of crushing area of one rivet will be d into t where d is diameter of rivet and t is thickness of each plate it is crushing area of one rivet and one cr when crushing failure will occur when crushing of all rivets in one plate is occurring so here we will to calculate total crushing area in crushing area of one rivet we will multiply total number of rivet per plate and here total number of rivet per plate that is capital N is 6 from this diagram after uh, by counting also you can conclude that so total number of rivet per plate is 6 so it is the expression of crushing load carrying capacity of the system now permissible crushing stress is already given in the question it is 120 mega pascal into diameter of rivet is 15 thickness of each plate is 10 into number of rivet per plate is 6 so after solving we will get the expression of crushing load carrying capacity and it is coming 120 into 15 into 10 into 6 it is coming 108 triple zero newton in kilo newton it will be 108 kilo newton so it is crushing load carrying capacity of the system now we have to calculate actual load carrying capacity our main objective is to calculate actual load carrying capacity now what will be the expression of actual load carrying capacity it will be minimum of pt that is tearing load carrying capacity pc that is crushing load carrying capacity and ps that is shearing load carrying capacity means minimum value out of pt pc ps is nothing but actual load carrying capacity of this system now what is the minimum value out of pt pc and ps you can see ps is 169.64 it is 20 out of these two this is lesser value now this is 169 and pc is 108 so out of 169 and 108 108 min is minimum value so out of ps pt pc minimum value is 108 kilo newton so actual load carrying capacity of this system is 108 kilo newton if you write in newton it is 108 triple zero newton so first part we have solved 
that is actual load carrying velocity which is coming 108 kilo newton or new in newton it is coming 108 000 newton so actual load carrying velocity examiner is asking in kilo newton and actual load carrying velocity of this system is 108 kilo newton okay now second we have to calculate efficiency of this riveted joint so second we have to calculate efficiency of this riveted joint now what is the expression of efficiency of riveted joint it is actual load carrying capacity of the system which we have already calculated upon load carrying capacity of the system or, or of the plate without rivet and hole and what will be the expression of load carrying city of the system without rivet and hole that i have already derived or explained to you now actual load carrying city we have calculated now below side we will take load carrying city without rivet and without hole and when when plate is subjected to tensile load p and no rivet and hole are present in the plate in that case only tensile stress will come in the plate now to avoid uh, miss uh, if tensile stress is coming so to uh, uh, in plate uh, which type of failure can occur tearing failure now to avoid tearing failure uh, we will equate uh, when we are, we are calculating load carrying city to avoid tearing failure we will equate sigma t to sigma tp into and if no rivet and hole are present then effective area of the plate will be width into thickness that is wt <coughs> and you can directly remember this expression also that is expression to calculate load carrying city without rivet and hole now be careful with unit if here you are putting sigma tp in newton per mm square or mega pascal and width into thickness in mm square okay so it will come in newton and if this below side is coming in newton to put actual value of actual load carrying city also in newton because uh, unit of both terms should be same so here we'll put actual load carrying city value in newton because below side term we are calculating in newton and actual load carrying city in newton is 108000 newton now sigma tp is permissible tear tensile stress of the plate which is 100 mega pascal into w is width of the plate which is width of the plate which is 250 and t is thickness of plate which is 10 mm so we'll get the value of efficiency of this riveted joint and it is coming It is coming 0 0.432 so efficiency of this riveted joint is 0 0.432 in percent it will be 43.2 percent whenever NAT numerical answer type is question is coming only see K with careful whether examiner is suggesting efficiency or asking efficiency in percent if, it, if it examiner is not asking uh, in percent or nothing is mentioned means we have to give answer in points which is coming 0 0.432 if examiner is asking in efficiency then we have to put answer 43.2 percent so efficiency of this joint is 0 0.432 or 43.2 percent right now we are asking in percent so it will be 43.2 percent now we have to do round off to one decimal nearest integer sorry so in nearest integer correct answer is 43 actual answer is 43.2 but since examiner is saying round off to nearest integer so nearest integer value will be 43 percent okay so it is the solution of this question now now we will discuss uh, one important concept uh, in riveted joint when number of again i am discussing this concept when number of rivet in each row are same and that concept is how to calculate load carrying capacity per pitch length i am not taking, uh, talking about total load carrying capacity load carrying capacity per pitch length so now we will discuss one important concept that is load carrying capacity per pitch length but this concept we are discussing when number of rivet in each row are same okay so student now we'll discuss one important concept that is load carrying capacity per pitch length okay and i am discussing this concept for the case when number of rivet in each row are same number of rivet in each row are same now what is the meaning of load carrying capacity per pitch length i am not talking about total load carrying capacity i am talking about load carrying capacity per pitch length okay now for that uh, first consider any row of rivet okay uh, suppose i am considering this row of rivet now in this row this uh, suppose i am taking the center point of this rivet now what is pitch distance pitch distance is central distance between two consecutive row sorry central distance between two consecutive rivet in same row so central distance between two consecutive rivet in same row means can i say this distance is nothing but this is one pitch distance okay so it is one pitch distance now uh, what if i will draw a horizontal line from this point this center point 
again after pitch distance this point will come so if i will draw a horizontal line from this point okay so can i say this distance is nothing but one pitch distance okay i have drawn this pitch distance by taking a first row okay so this is one pitch distance so whatever the load carrying capacity of this system will come in this gap that is known as load carrying capacity per pitch length load carrying capacity per pitch length okay it is not total load carrying capacity Ma now suppose total load carrying capacity is p just for understanding and to load carrying capacity per pitch length is p ds what is p ds just for understanding p ds is load carrying capacity per pitch length and p is total load carrying capacity so in p ds p in p ds means load carrying capacity per pitch length if you will multiply number of rivet in each row in p ds if you will multiply number of rivet in each row you will get the expression of total load carrying capacity means can i say load carrying capacity per pitch length load carrying capacity per pitch length is nothing but actual load carrying capacity or total load carrying capacity divided by number of rivet in each row and we now right now we are denoting number of rivet in each row by letter small n so divide by small n small n what is small n here it is number of rivet in each row okay so right now we are not calculating total load carrying capacity i am calculating load carrying capacity per pitch length okay load carrying capacity per pitch length e examiner will generally ask load carrying capacity per pitch length when number of rivet in each row are not given in the question okay if number if number of rivet in each row right now you will say sir here we can from this diagram we can say here number of rivet in each row is 3 but i uh, what i am doing i am doing this means uh, right now i don't know what is number of rivet in each row here it might be possible this split is bigger and one more row of, uh, one more rivet can come in this row and one more rivet can can come this in row okay means we are discussing this when number of rivet in each row are not given but we know number of rivet in each row are same number of rivet in each row are same because we are discussing this concept when number of rivet in each row are same so when number of rivet in each row is same but number of rivet in each row is not given in the question means n is not given in the question and diagram is also not given okay, this diagram i have made just for understanding okay in that case in that case we will calculate load carrying capacity per pitch length definitely examiner will mention calculate load carrying capacity per pitch length okay okay so we will calculate load carrying capacity per pitch length okay now so first i am explaining the load carrying capacity per pitch length so first i am explaining load carrying capacity per pitch length for to avoid shearing failure means this is not total load shearing load carrying capacity it is shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length now how to calculate shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length very simple very simple shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length now when you are calculating total shearing load carrying capacity what was the formula to calculate total shearing load carrying capacity whenever we are calculating so load shearing load carrying capacity first we will equate actual tau with tau p same process will equate actual tau with tau p that is permissible shear stress into shear area of one rivet now what is the formula to calculate shear area of one rivet it is pi by 4 d square into k where value of k is 1 for single shear and value of k is 2 for double shear if it is single strip it is lap joint or single strip but but joint uh, it will be one rivet will be subjected to single shear where so value of k will be 1 if it is double strip but joint So it will be subjected to double shear, means value of K will be two. Same expression. N two, N two. When we were calculating total shearing load carrying capacity, we are calculate we were calculating total shear area. So we uh, what we were doing, we were multiplying shear area of one rivet by total number of rivet per plate. But here we are not calculating. Uh, here we are not calculating uh, total shearing load carrying capacity. Here we are calculating load carrying shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length. So what we will do instead of multiplying total number of rivet. here we will multiply number of rivet per pitch length number of rivet per pitch length so here we will multiply number of rivets per pitch length number of rivets per pitch length so whenever we are calculating load carrying capacity uh, load carrying capacity per pitch length here one important term is coming number of rivet per pitch length so what what will be the number how to calculate number of rivets per pitch length it is very easy number of rivets per pitch length okay okay and again i am saying only focus on one plate if it is lap joint no problem if it is butt joint focus on one plate and how to calculate so first draw a one pitch distance line 
how to draw this line take any row and now i'm taking center of this rivet center of this rivet and drawing the horizontal line from this line or and horizontal means it is one pitch distance now within one pitch distance within one pitch distance region visualize how many rivets are coming so you can see in this pitch distance in this row half rivet plus half rivet means one rivet is coming in this pitch distance also this half rivet plus half rivet means again one rivet is coming so in this row one rivet is coming in this row one rivet is coming i'm not again total rivet i'm talking counting number of rivet per pitch length so in this row per pitch length one rivet is coming in this row per pitch length again one rivet is coming so what is the for this diagram what is the number of rivet per pitch length sir can i say for this diagram it is 2 but for different diagram it can come different but here you can see important result if number of rivet in each row are same so can i say in that case number of rivet per pitch length will be equal to number of rows like it is double row so number of rivet per pitch length is coming to if it will be single row number of rivet per pitch length will be 1 if it is triple row number of rivet per pitch length will be 3 when number of rivets in each row are same number of rivets in each row are same generally this question will come when number of rivet in each row are same okay so it is number of rivet per pitch length i am not writing two here because uh, in actual question triple row riveted joint can question can also come question from uh, four per uh, uh, five row riveted joint can also come question from single row riveted joint can also come so it is number of rivet per pitch length okay and it will be generally it will be equal to number of row i am denoting number of row with letter small m okay so it is shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length in this expression if you multiply if you multiply a number of rivet in each row number of rivet in each row you will get the expression of total shearing load carrying capacity and you can verify this also uh, it is um, uh, it is the expression of shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length and here can i say small m is coming that is number of row because number of rivet per pitch length will be equal to number of row when number of rivet in each row are same now in this expression if you multiply number of rivet in each row that is small n will get total uh, shearing load carrying capacity and small m into small n is nothing but capital n that is number of rivet per pitch and formula to calculate shearing load carrying total shearing load carrying capacity is tau p into pi by 4 d square into k into capital n same expression we are getting okay but but when we are uh, when number of rivet in each row are already given in the question we need not to calculate per pitch length why we will calculate this this will calculate when number of rivet in each row are not given in the question so it is shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length similarly now i am writing the expression of crushing load carrying capacity per pitch length in same manner we will proceed how to calculate crushing load carrying capacity per pitch length so whenever we are calculating crushing load carrying capacity we will equate sigma c with sigma cp that is permissible crushing stress into total crushing area for that first calculate crushing area of one rivet the expression of crushing area of one rivet will always be dt so it is crushing area of one rivet into if we are calculating total crushing load carrying capacity we will multiply total number of rivet per plate but right now we are calculating crushing load carrying capacity per pitch length so we will multiply this with number of rivet per pitch length because we are calculating uh, to crushing load carrying capacity per pitch length again um, for this diagram number of rivet per pitch length is equal to 2 that is number of rows that is small m also okay so in actual question we will count that and we will multiply this so it is crushing load carrying capacity per pitch length okay now similarly i am writing the expression of tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length now how to write the expression of tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length for that again uh, again we'll see uh, the row which is nearest to load p now suppose this row is nearest to load p you can take any row because right now number of row in each uh, number of rivet in each row are same where we are discussing that case so the row which is nearest is this now if you want to avoid tearing failure we need to avoid tearing of this entire system in, in, in this entire plate from this plane but right now we are not calculating tearing load carrying capacity total we are calculating tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length so so see the tearing area which is coming in per pitch length distance in this row so tearing area in this plane can i say the tearing area in this plane is this okay because we are not calculating total actual to calculate total tearing load carrying capacity we need to consider tearing area of this entire plane in this row but we are calculating uh, its value per pitch length per pitch length mean we need to see in this plane tearing area per pitch length and in the per pitch length distance in this plane tearing area is this green plane now what is the effective width of this plane green plane 
it is p minus it is p minus dh by 2 because we are calculating effective width of plate means we have to subtract the diameter of hole so this is dh by 2 and this is dh by 2 means ultimately we have to multiply um, we have to subtract 1 dh 1 dh so for this diagram for this diagram the expression of tearing area per pitch length will be p minus dh into thickness p minus dh into thickness oh, okay and oh, okay okay so uh, this expression uh, will always come because it is not depending upon the number of row whether number of row is 3 number of row is 4 number of row is 2 number of row is 1 because we are when we are calculating tearing area we need to only focus on nearest row okay we need not to uh, we need not to bother about second row third row and if you are focusing on nearest row in nearest row uh, if you are calculating tearing area per pitch length so in one pitch distance always the expression of tearing area will be p minus dh into t okay because in this row one pitch distance ultimately one rivet is coming this half and this half one and if one rivet is coming means in one pitch distance means one hole will come so effective width will be p minus dh p because we are take calculating tearing area per pitch length okay and into thickness of the plate so this expression will always be uh, sigma tp that is permissible tensile stress into p minus dh into t it is not tearing load connectivity total it is tearing load connectivity per pitch length. again but you need not to memorize this formula by drawing this diagram easily you can calculate this area okay so it is the expression of tearing load connectivity per pitch length okay okay so we will use this terminology per pitch length whenever the width of the plate is not given or number of rivet in each row are not given in the question okay now, if you have calculated tearing load connectivity per pitch length, crushing load connectivity per pitch length, shearing load connectivity per pitch length, so what will be the expression of actual load carrying capacity per pitch length? I am not talking about uh, total load carrying capacity, I am talking about load carrying capacity per pitch length. Now, what is total load, uh, actual load carrying capacity? Minimum of PT, PC and PS. Similarly, can I say in this case, the load carrying capacity per pitch length, actual load carrying capacity per pitch length will be minimum of tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length crushing load carrying capacity per pitch length and shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length so whatever minimum value is coming that will be load carrying capacity per pitch length okay now if we calculate load carrying capacity per pitch length next is how we can calculate efficiency so now i am explaining how to calculate efficiency of the riveted joint okay and mainly we have calculated this load carrying capacity per pitch length whenever in examination examiner is asking efficiency and number of rivet in each row are not mentioned in the question in that case to calculate efficiency calculate load carrying capacity per pitch length okay so expression of efficiency will be uh, expression of efficiency is total load carrying capacity actual load carrying capacity upon actual load carrying capacity without rivet and hole this is the actual expression of load carrying uh, uh, efficiency but if we have calculated load carrying study per pitch length so below side term will also calculate load carrying study per pitch length means if we are calculating efficiency and number of rivet in each row are not given so to calculate efficiency we will calculate actual load carrying study per pitch length and since in above side we are taking actual load carrying study per pitch length in below side we will also below side we take load carrying study without rivet and hole but again we will calculate load carrying study without rivet and hole per pitch length no total okay 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 if above side you are taking total below side also take total if above side taking per pitch length below side also take per pitch length will get same efficiency because if in, in in this expression if you will multiply small n that is a number of rivet in h row you will get total load carrying capacity again in this expression if you will multiply small n you will get to load carrying capacity total load carrying capacity without rivet and hole so it okay so 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 this n and in n is same so it will come uh, cut with each other and since it is getting cancelled uh, so it will not uh, this efficiency will not depend upon the value of n because above side also n is coming below side n is coming so this will term will get cancelled so if in exam efficiency is asked by the examiner a number of rivet in each row are not mentioned in that case calculate to actual load carrying study per pitch length and load carrying study without rivet and hole now how to calculate actual load carrying study per pitch length that i have already explained now how to calculate load carrying study without rivet and without hole without rivet and hole means we had to take plate without rivet and hole now thickness of plate is t now width of the plate is w w w 
बट वी आर नॉट कैलकुलेटिंग टोटल लोड कैरिंग सिटी वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग टोटल लोड कैरिंग सिटी पर पिच लेंथ विदाउट रिवेट एंड होल मीन्स इंस्टेड ऑफ टेकिंग इफेक्टिव विथ इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू टेक विथ इक्वल टू पिच डिस्टेंस बिकॉज वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग लोड कैरिंग सिटी विदाउट रिवेट एंड होल एंड टेक वन पिच डिस्टेंस बाई इमेजिनिंग नो रोल एंड हिवेट नो रोल होल एंड रिवेट बिकॉज वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग लोड कैरिंग सिटी विदाउट रिवेट एंड होल बट नॉट टोटल वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग पर पिच लेंथ so take width equal to per pitch length because we are calculating per pitch length now whatever load carrying capacity will come for this system will be load carrying capacity without rivet without hole per pitch length and it will come since we are calculating load carrying capacity uh, we will equate sigma t with permissible that is sigma tp into effective area of this plate per pitch length and if no rivet and hole is coming effective area will be pt if you want you can remember this expression directly that is load carrying capacity per pitch length without roll and hole If you are writing total load carrying capacity without rivet and hole, it will be sigma T P into W T. But if you are calculating load load carrying capacity without rivet and hole per pitch length, instead of W pitch distance will come. That is, it will be sigma T P into P into T. So from this formula, we can calculate efficiency of the joint. Okay, based on this, we will solve some question. Like it is one question. What this question is saying? If the ratio of diameter of rivet hole to the pitch of the rivet is 0.25 what question is saying diameter of rivet hole that is dh upon pitch of the rivet is 0.25 then a tearing efficiency we need not to find actual total efficiency we need to find tearing efficiency okay tearing efficiency means above side we will take tearing load carrying capacity so examiner is asking tearing load carrying capacity now here number of rivet in each row are not given so to calculate this efficiency we will use the concept of per pitch length load carrying capacity Okay, so now what is the formula to calculate tearing load carrying capacity? We need to find this. Now, formula to calculate tearing load carrying capacity will be uh, sorry. So, formula to calculate tearing efficiency it will be above side we will take tearing load carrying capacity that is PT, and below side we will take load carrying capacity again without rivet and hole. Okay, since we are calculating without rivet and hole, and since uh, Since we are calculating tearing load capacity, that's why above side we are taking tearing tearing load capacity. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Since we are calculating tearing efficiency, that side uh, that's why above side I am taking tearing load capacity, and below side term will always be load capacity without rivet and hole. Now, but since here width of the plate is not given, diagram is also not given, number of rivet in each row are not given. So instead of calculating total tearing load capacity, we'll calculate tearing load capacity per pitch length. And if you are calculating tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length, below side term will also we will calculate load carrying capacity without rivet and hole per pitch length. Now expression of this you can directly remember it will be sigma T P, it will be sigma T P into P into T. If you are calculating total, it will be W into two. If you are calculating per pitch length, it will be P into T. Now what will be the expression of tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length? Now, now. Uh, here you can also say number of row of rivet are also not given. But when you are calculating tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length, you need not know, know no need to know what is are the number of rows. Why? Suppose in this row, uh, this is first row, this is second row, this is third row. Similarly, more row can also come. Now, if you are calculating tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length, first consider row which is nearest to the plate. Suppose this row, I am not drawing drawing complete diagram of riveted joint. Okay, uh, con just consider the row which is nearest to the uh, load P of any plate. Suppose this row is nearest. Now, in this row, if you consider one pitch distance, it is one pitch distance. Now, in which one pitch distance, if you want to write t uh, calculate tearing load carrying capacity, consider the row which is nearest to load P. Suppose this row is nearest to load P. Now, in this row, we want to calculate tearing area per pitch length. So, in this row, tearing area per pitch length will be. For that effective width will be this because we are not calculating total tearing area per pitch length. Now in in per pitch length distance it is one pitch. Now in one per pitch length distance effective width of the plate is this, and this is nothing but p minus dh by two d minus dh by two that is p minus dh and thickness of plate is t. So here tearing area per pitch length will come p minus dh into t. Okay, okay. It will not depend how many rows are involved. So tearing area per pitch length will always be P minus dH into T. So what is the expression of tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length? So expression of tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length is since we are calculate uh, calculate expression of tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length, we will equate sigma T with sigma T P into tearing area, but not total tearing area. Tearing area per pitch length. 
and here you can see in one pitch length tearing area is coming p minus dh into t this expression will always come okay and i uh, 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 this i already explained to you earlier also this per pitch length tearing load capacity will always come sigma tp into p minus dh into t so it is sigma tp into p minus dh into t it is tearing load capacity per pitch length now below side will take load capacity without rivet and hole per pitch length and this expression you can directly remember it will be sigma tp into pt if you are calculating total load capacity without rivet and hole it will be sigma tp into wt if you are calculating to load capacity without rivet and hole per pitch length it will be sigma tp into pt so can i say ultimately in this question tearing efficiency will be sigma tp into p minus dh into t divided by sigma tp into p into t now here sigma tp sigma tp will get cancelled tt will also get cancelled so it will come p minus dh upon p now uh, if you separate this it will be 1 minus dh upon p yes sir now 1 minus dh upon p dh upon p is given in the question it is 0 0.25 so it is 1 minus 0 0.25 so tearing efficiency of this component is 1 minus 0 0.25 that is 0 0.75 and examiner is asking answer in point so tearing efficiency of this riveted joint is 0 0.75 which option is correct option b is correct okay now i am solving one more question it is the next question what this question is saying in double row lap riveted joint with chain pattern in double row lap riveted joint with chain pattern so number of rows are two because it is double row lap riveted joint thickness of each plate is 6 mm so thickness of each plate is given uh, suppose first i am drawing the diagram of double row lap riveted joint just for understanding it is lap riveted joint double row means number of rows are two So now double riveted lap riveted joint with chain pattern with chain pattern uh, means number of arrangement of rivets in each row are same thickness of each plate is 6 mm thickness of each plate that is T is 6 mm uh, pitch is pitch distance is given uh, 50 mm that is small p is given 50 mm diameter of rivet is 10 mm you can check diameter of rivet is 10 mm diameter of rivet hole that is dh is 11 mm and allowable tensile stress of the plate allowable tensile stress that is sigma tp is given it is 100 mega pascal you can check allowable shear stress of the rivet is uh, that is tau p is given it is 80 mega pascal and allowable crushing stress that is sigma cp is given it is 120 mega pascal now we have to calculate first crushing load carrying density per pitch length that is first we have to find crushing load carrying density that is pc but not total per pitch length second we have to find shearing load carrying density per pitch length that is ps per pitch length similarly third we have to find tearing load carrying density per pitch length that is pt per pitch length similarly fourth we have to find actual load carrying density per pitch length that is plcc per pitch length and fifth we have to find efficiency and suppose examiner is just asking about efficiency so here you can see number of rivet in each row are not given number of row is given it is double row but number of rivet in each row are same but how many row rivets are involved in each row that is not given in the question and also width of the plate is also not given instead of with pitch of the rivet is given it is 50 mm so here we will calculate a load density per pitch length okay if efficiency is asked about in, in the question okay so we here we will calculate load carrying density per pitch line and examiner is also asking various load carrying density per pitch line. So number of number of row is 2 but we don't know number of rivet in each row that's why I, I had drawn this dotted line because I don't know what is are the number of rivet in each row. But number of row is 2 that is given in the question. Now here we have to calculate uh, uh, per pitch length load carrying density. So take any row or mark one pitch distance. It is the center point of this rivet. It is the center of point of this rivet. From this uh, we will draw a horizontal line from this point we will draw a horizontal line so this distance in one pitch distance now you can easily write the expression of load density per pitch length first i am writing or calculating 
लोड कैरेंसिटी पर पिच लेंथ टू अवॉइड क्रसिंग फेलवर मीन्स क्रसिंग लोड कैरेंसिटी पर पिच लेंथ ओके बिकॉज एग्जामिनर फाइव फर्स्ट आज क्रसिंग लोड कैरेंसिटी पर पिच लेंथ सो फर्स्ट टाइम राइटिंग द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ क्रसिंग लोड कैरेंसिटी पर पिच लेंथ ना हाउ टू राइट नाउ वी हाउ वी राइट क्रसिंग लोड कैरेंसिटी एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ क्रसिंग लोड कैरेंसिटी सिंस वी आर राइटिंग द क्रसिंग लोड कैरेंसिटी मीस क्रसिंग लोड कैरेंसिटी मीस लोड कैरेंसिटी टू अवॉइड क्रसिंग फेलवर to find that express uh, to find the value of crushing load capacity we equate actual crushing stress that is sigma c with permissible crushing stress that is sigma cp so first we will equate sigma c with sigma cp now into crushing area of one rivet now crushing area of one rivet will always be dt into total number of rivet per plate if you are calculating total crushing load capacity but right now we are calculating crushing load capacity per pitch length so you have to count crushing total number of rivet per pitch length means we have to multiply number of rivet per pitch length so here we will multiply number of rivet per pitch length because we are calculating crushing load capacity per pitch length now sigma cp is given it is 120 mega pascal t is diameter of rivet which is 10 t is thickness of plate which is 6 now number of rivet per pitch length and here you can see it is one pitch length distance now in this row uh, half plus half one rivet is coming in this row half plus half again one rivet is coming so in this row one rivet is coming in pitch one pitch distance in this row also one rivet is coming in one pitch distance so here number of rivet per pitch length is 2 so here number of rivet per pitch length is 2 so i am multiplying 2 okay and it will be equal to number of row since here two row are involved that's why number of rivet per pitch length is coming so we'll get the x value of crushing load carrying capacity per pitch length we'll get the value of crushing load carrying capacity per pitch length and it is coming after solving it is coming 120 into 10 into 6 into 2 it is coming 14400 newton in kilo newton it will be 14.4 kilo newton so it is the expression of crushing load carrying capacity per pitch length okay so first examiner has crushing load carrying capacity per pitch length it is come it has come 14.4 kilo newton so 14. Four. Okay. Second, we have to calculate shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length. So now I am calculating shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length. Now, how to calculate per pitch length? Since we are calculating shearing load carrying capacity, so we will get actual shear stress with permissible that is tau p into shear area of one rivet. Shear area of one rivet will be pi by four d square into k, where k will be one for single shear and k will be two for double shear. Into If we are calculating total shear load capacity, we will multiply number of rivet per plate. But if we are calculating shear load capacity per pitch length, we need to multiply number of rivets per pitch length. Okay. Now permissible shear stress is 80 into pi by 4 d square. Diameter is 10 square into k. Here value of k will be 1. Why? Because it is lap joint, and in lap joint, one rivet will be subjected to single shear. I am not drawing complete diagram. If you want, you can draw here. Here rivet is coming. Okay, I am drawing just a short diagram here. But you can imagine, from in one rivet, shearing will only occur from one plane, like from this plane, because here load P will uh, and here load P is coming. It will try to shear off this rivet from this plane. So in one rivet, only shearing is occurring with from one plane. So here it is subjected to single shear, means value of K will be equal to one because it is lap joint. Into number of rivet. Per pitch length and number of rivet per pitch length we have already calculated. It is equal to t. That is number of. It is equal to number of row. So we will get the magnitude of shearing load capacity per pitch length and it is coming pi by four into ten square into one into two into eighty. It is coming one two five double six. You can check calculation. One two five double six point three seven newton in kilo newton it will be one two five point one twelve point five double six kilo newton. So it is the expression of shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length. It is coming twelve point five six six kilo newton. So examiner is asking round off to one decimal place, so it will be twelve point five or twelve point six kilo newton. Okay. So. we have calculated shearing load capacity per pitch length now we have to calculate tearing we have to calculate tearing load capacity per pitch length 
सो नाउ अवर ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू कैलकुलेट टीयरिंग लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी पर के जी नाउ हाउ टू कैलकुलेट फॉर दैट कंसिडर द नियरेस्ट रो ऑफ लोड पी सपोज आई एम टेकिंग दिस प्लेट ए दिस लोड पी इज पी नाउ फ्रॉम द लोड पी ऑफ प्लेट ए नियरेस्ट रो इज दिस सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट टीयरिंग लोड कैपेसिटी वी नीड टू एवर टीयरिंग फ्रॉम दिस रो But right now we are not calculating the expression of total tearing load capacity. We are calculating tearing load capacity per pitch length. So if we are calculating tearing load capacity per pitch length, calculate tearing area in one pitch distance from this row. Now in this row, tearing area in which one pitch distance will for that we need to calculate this width, because in this row in one pitch distance effective width of the plate is this. So how to calculate tearing load capacity? First we will equate sigma t with permissible. Into tearing area, but here we will not calculate total tearing area. We are calculate total tearing area per pitch length from this nearest row. Now, in this nearest row, effective width of the plate per pitch length is P minus D H because it is D H by two. D H by two means P minus D H. So, from nearest row, tearing area of plate per pitch distance is coming. For that, effective width is coming P minus D H into thickness of the plate. And this expression will always be uh, same. means whenever number of rivet in each row are same and you are calculating number of rivet per pitch length always this expression will come okay now it is sigma tp is permissible tensile stress of the plate which is 100 mega pascal into p is pitch distance which is 50 minus dh is diameter of hole it is 11 if it is not given take then take dh nearly equal to d into thickness of the plate which is 6 mm so we'll get the magnitude of tearing load capacity per pitch length and it is coming it is coming 23400 newton in kilo newton it will be 23.4 23.4 kilo newton so it is the expression of tearing load carrying capacity per pitch okay and how much it is coming 23.4 kilo newton So tearing load capacity per pitch length is twenty three point four kilometer. Now, what will be the value of actual load carrying capacity per pitch length? So actual load carrying capacity per pitch length will be actual load carrying capacity per pitch length. So actual load carrying capacity per pitch length will be minimum of crushing load carrying capacity per pitch length, shearing load carrying capacity per pitch length. And tearing load carrying capacity per pitch length means whatever load carrying capacity per pitch length has come by considering different type of fiber, minimum of those value will be load carrying capacity, actual load carrying capacity per pitch length. Now minimum of these values are it is one one fourteen point four, it is twelve point five six six, it is minimum out of these two, it is twelve. So overall minimum is this value. So overall minimum load carrying cap, overall minimum value is overall minimum value out of these three value is one two five double six point three seven newton. So can I say actual load carrying capacity per pitch length will be one two five double six point three seven newton, or in kilo newton it will be twelve point five double six kilo newton. So actual per lo actual load carrying capacity per pitch length is twelve point five six six kilo newton. So actual load carrying capacity per pitch length is twelve point five six six kilo newton, or A round off to one decimal place, it will be twelve point six kilo newton. Okay. Now next we have to find efficiency of the riveted joint. So now to find efficiency, if we have calculated actual load carrying capacity per pitch length, so below side we will take load carrying capacity without rivet, without rivet, and hole per pitch length. Okay. Now actual load carrying capacity per pitch length uh, we have already calculated. Now expression of load carrying capacity without rivet without hole is sigma T P into W T. If we are calculating total load carrying capacity without rivet and hole, but if we are calculating load carrying capacity without rivet and hole per pitch length instead of W huge pitch distance that is P. So X formula to calculate load carrying capacity without rivet and hole per pitch length will be sigma T P into instead of W huge P into T. Now, if we are taking sigma T P in mega pascal or newton per mm square, and we are putting value of P and T and mm, means this product in mm square. So below term will come in newton, and since below term is coming in newton, put value of above term also in newton. Okay, because unit of both above and below term should be same. So efficiency will come actual load carrying capacity per pitch length in newton. It is one two five double six point three seven newton. 
नाउ परमिशिबल टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस इन न्यूटन पर एम स्क्वायर और मेगा पास्कल इज हंड्रेड इन टू दिस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ पी इन टू टी इन एम एम स्क्वायर सो पी इन एम एम इज फिफ्टी एंड टी इन एम एम इज सिक्स सो इट विल बी फिफ्टी इंटू सिक्स सो बिलो टर्म वी आर ऑल्सो मे पुटिंग इन न्यूटन सो एफिशंसी विल कम इट इज कमिंग वन टू फाइव डबल सिक्स पॉइंट थ्री सेवन डिवाइड बाई हंड्रेड डिवाइड बाई फिफ्टी डिवाइड बाई सिक्स इट इज कमिंग एफिशंसी जीरो पॉइंट फोर वन नाइन और इन परसेंट इट विल बी फोर्टी वन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट सो इट इज द एफिशंसी ऑफ दिस सिस्टम ओके इफ नथिंग इज मैं एफिशंसी इन पॉइंट इफ एग्जामिनर इज आस्किंग इन परसेंट इट विल बी फोर्टी वन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट सो वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट एफिशंसी बाई मिस्टेक इट आई है किलोमीटर एक्चुअली इट इज परसेंट सो एग्जामिनर इज आस्किंग एफिशंसी इन परसेंट and in percent the value has come 41.9% so efficiency in percent is 41.9% okay so it is the solution of this question now in riveted joint we will discuss one special case that is diamond pattern of riveted joint so now we will discuss diamond pattern of riveted joint okay so student now we'll discuss one special case in riveted joint and that special case is diamond pattern Now, what is diamond pattern? For that, I have taken the example of butt riveted joint, double strip plate butt riveted joint. But in the actual question, it can be single strip or double strip. Here, uh, important point is we have to discuss diamond pattern. Now, what is diamond pattern? Till now, the whatever cases we have discussed in that on those cases, number of rivet in each row are same, were same. But to uh, increase the tearing load capacity, why I am saying to increase the tearing load capacity? After explanation, you will understand. instead of using uh, number of rivet in each row same we can use one special pattern which is known as diamond pattern now what is diamond pattern uh, for that to explain diamond pattern suppose i am considering this plate this plate is plate a so i am taking considering the load of plate load p of plate a okay okay instead of that if you want you can also visualize through plate b also but right now i am visualizing through plate a and now it is the load uh, load p of plate a now nearest row from this load p of plate a is this this row i am denoting as row 1 now next row from this load p is this i am denoting this row as row 2 now after that next row is row 3 okay okay th th this rivet will not belong to plate a this rivets are belonging to plate b like if you are visualizing plate b and load p of plate b this will be first row this will be second row this will be third row first row is nearest row from load p after that row 2 is coming and farthest row from load p is third row now here see number of rivet in each row are not same it is increasing when you are moving from row 1 to row 2 to row 3 in row 1 number of rivet is 1 1 in row 2 number of rivet is 2 and in row 3 number of rivet is 3 so when number of rivet in each row is increasing when you are moving away from load p when you are moving away from load p then that pattern is known as diamond pattern that pattern is known as diamond pattern you need not to write this in wording through this diagram you can visualize if number of row in a number of rivet in rows are increasing when you are moving in uh, uh, away from load p and number of rivet uh, is increasing when you are moving away from load p then that pattern of riveting is known as diamond pattern okay so this is diamond pattern and right now if you will write complete naming it is triple riveted because three row are coming the uh, uh, triple riveted double strap plate but riveted joint with diamond pattern in which number of rivet in this row is one number of rivet in this row is two number of rivet in this row is three okay so here number of rivet in each row are not same so you cannot say number of rivet in each row that is small n is this because here number of rivet is in each row is not same but here if i will ask what is total number of rivet per plate that you can count and by counting you can find this total number of rivet per plate which i am denoting as capital n so in this row one is coming in this row two rivet is coming so 2 plus 1 3 in this row three rivet is coming so 1 plus 2 plus 3 1 plus 2 plus 3 3 1 1 plus 2 plus 3 6 okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 so number of rivet per plate is 6 now here in diamond pattern there will be no change in the formula to calculate shearing load carrying capacity and crushing load capacity means in diamond pattern also method to calculate shearing load carrying capacity and crushing load carrying capacity will remain same so first i am explaining math formula uh, or concept to calculate shearing load capacity and crushing load capacity 
because that concept to calculate shearing load capacity or crushing load capacity will remain same in diamond pattern also so what is shear what will be the expression of shearing load capacity suppose i am denoting shearing load capacity as ps so what will be the expression of total shearing load capacity that is ps again if you are calculating shear load capacity first we will equate actual shear stress that is tau with tau p so we will equate tau with tau p into shear area total shear area for that first write the expression of shear area of one rivet now what is the formula to calculate shear area of one rivet it will again remain same that is pi by 4 d square into k and k will be equal to 1 for single shear k will be equal to 2 for double shear like it is double by strip plate so here you can see in one from in one rivet shearing is occurring from two plane means can i say here one rivet is subjected to double shear so here for this question value of k will be equal to 2 okay if a, it is single strip plate value of k will be equal to 3 so right now for this question value of k is equal to 2 into into when shearing failure will occur when shearing of all rivets is occurring in per plate so we have to multiply this to to this with number of rivet per plate right now for this question number of rivet is per plate is 6 okay 6 so here value of capital n is 6 i already written but right now i am not solving the numerical that's why i have written like this capital n is number of rivet per plate means same expression okay see to calculate shearing load capacity similarly if we calculate crushing load capacity again same concept we have applied crushing load capacity how to calculate crushing load capacity since we are calculating crushing load capacity first we will equate sigma c with the sigma cp into first write the expression of crushing area of one rivet now always the crushing er expression of crushing area of one rivet will be dt now multiply this with number of rivet per plate why because when crushing failure will occur when crushing of all rivet is occurring now number of rivet per plate for this question is 6 so you need to multiply by 6 which i am right now i am denoting with capital n so it is the expression of you can write also 6 or you, capital n so it is the expression of crushing load carrying capacity of this system now here we need to understand tearing load capacity now here we will calculate tearing load capacity to avoid tearing failure from first row also the if number of rivet in up uh, in further row is more than this row then we will calculate tearing load capacity to avoid tearing from second row also then we will calculate load capacity to avoid tearing from third row also if number of rivet in third row is more than row 2 means what i am saying if number of rivet in upcoming rows are increasing means number of rivet in the rows which by moving away from load p are increasing then we will calculate number of uh, sorry then we will calculate load capacity to avoid tearing from this row also this row also this row also and minimum of the uh, minimum value of this tearing uh, load capacity which is coming from tearing from first to avoid tearing from first row tearing from second row and tearing from third row minimum value out of this, this value will be actual tearing load capacity so first we are calculating tearing load capacity to avoid tearing from first row and i am denoting this as pt first now how to calculate this understand carefully uh, this concept is same which i have explained earlier we want to avoid tearing from first row now with respect to this load p this is first row now i want to avoid tearing from this row means i want to tearing from this now if this plate is getting tearing from this plane this system will get fail why because in this side because uh, i am talking about plate a now in this side of plate a no other rivets are coming so if rearing from this first row is occurring means can i say this part of plate a will get separate from entire system and this part of gate a is getting separated from entire system means our system will fail so if we want to avoid this failure this failure we need to avoid tearing from this first row now what will be the load carrying capacity to avoid tearing from first row but now formula to calculate tearing load carrying capacity is equate sigma t with sigma tp into tearing area so first we will equate sigma t with sigma tp now into tearing area and tearing area of this plane now how to calculate tearing area of any plane effective width of plate into thickness now in this plane right now effective width is w minus 1 hole is coming so in effective to calculate effective width we have to subtract w by dh so effective is w minus dh into thickness of the plane so it is load carrying capacity to avoid tearing from first row from first row now if number of rivet in second row is more right now it is more it is 2 so we will also calculate load carrying capacity to avoid tearing from second row 
and that load carrying capacity I am denoting as PT2, tearing from second row. Now understand this carefully. So first we are going to have a tearing from second row. Now suppose this plate is getting tearing from getting teared from this plane, that is from second row. Now but uh, we are talk, taking plate A. Now talking about plate A. Now in this side of plate A, if I will mark do do shaded this region. I will do shaded. I will shading this region. Now you can see, even if this plate will get tear from this plane, this part of plate A will not get separate from entire section because this rivet is not allowing the plate, uh, this part of plate A, to get separated. Means, can I say the 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 failure will occur from this row when tearing from this row is occurring simultaneously? Either crushing or shearing failure is occurring on the rivets which are in this side of plate A. Okay, so right now uh, the rivets uh, num number of rivets which is coming in this side of plate A, in this side of plate A are one, and tear failure from this plane will occur when tearing from this plane is occurring. Along with that, either shearing or crushing from of this rivet is occurring. After that, can I say this part of plate A will get separate from entire system? But if suppose only tearing is occurring from this plane, but uh, shearing or crushing of this rivet is not occurring, means this part of plate A will not get separated. So to avoid tearing from second row, to uh, and to calculate load carrying density, we need to calculate load carrying density from tearing from this plane, plus plus minimum of shearing or crushing of this rivet. I am not calculating shearing or crushing of entire rivet because right now. If if this uh, tearing is occurring from this plane and rivet shearing or crushing of this rivet is occurring, means plate A part of this uh, part this portion of plate A will get separated. Okay. So if we want to te avoid tearing from second row, how to calculate load carrying safety? First calculate uh, te te first calculate load carrying safety to avoid tearing from this row, and it will be for that equate sigma t with sigma t p into tearing area of this plane. And tearing area of this plane will be W minus twice of dS because two hole is coming into thickness of plate plus minimum of minimum of shearing or crushing of rivet which is coming in this side of plate A. And in this region only one rivet is coming, so minimum we have to calculate minimum value of shearing or crushing of this rivet. So if suppose first I am writing to avoid shearing of this rivet and only one rivet is coming in this side, so how to write? First, we require tau with tau p into shear area of one rivet. Shear area of one rivet will be pi by four d square into k. K will be one for single shear. It will be two for double shear. Like it, right now, it is double shear, so k will be two into number of rivet, but not total number of rivet. Number of rivet which is coming in this side and in this side, or right now only one rivet is coming, so into one. So it is avoiding shearing of this rivet. Now crushing. So for that, equate sigma c with sigma c p. Into crushing area of one rivet that is dt into into number of rivet in this side which is one. Okay. So it will be the load carrying capacity to avoid tearing from second row, and this we will only calculate when in second row number of rivet is more than row one. Okay, because ultimately we have to select the minimum value of pt one and minimum value of pt two, and suppose number of rivet in first row is also two, and in second row is also two. In that case, this PT one will always come minimum. That's why when number of rivet in each row are same, I was calculating only tearing from the nearest row from load P. But when number of rivet in each row are different, and in for the uh, in a row which are away from load P are more, then it might be possible PT one can come less than PT two, or PT two can also come less than PT one. Because right now, if you will see this term here, W minus D H is coming, and you see this term, this is W minus two D H. So you can see right now this term is lesser than this. Now, but uh, in this term something is adding. So if this addis, if weightage of this adding uh, ad, 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 addition is more, then PT2 will come more. But if this weightage of addition is less, then it might be possible PT2 is coming less and PT1 is coming more. So if PT1 is less, uh, overall load carrying capacity out of PT1 and PT2 will be PT1. If PT2 is less, overall load carrying capacity out of PT1 and PT2 will be PT2. So when number of rivet in upcoming row means row which are away from load P are more, then we need to calculate PT2. Otherwise, we will never calculate PT2. That's why I have mentioned this thing. You need to only calculate in diamond pattern. You need not to calculate these things 
when number of rivet in each row are same okay similarly if you will focus on third row in third row also you can see number of rivet is increasing so we will also calculate load density to avoid tearing from third row that is pt3 method will be same how to calculate pt3 so we, first we need to avoid tearing of from third row that is from this plane along with that it will show this side of plate a now to separate this portion from entire system first plate should get tear from this plane along with that the rivets which are coming this side and this side three right now three rivet are coming so we need to calculate shearing or crushing of this rivet okay and here three rivet are coming so when this system will fail like this when tearing from this plane is occurring plus either shearing or crushing of these three rivets are occurring so how to well how we will calculate tear to load current density to avoid tearing from third row first for that first calculate load current density to avoid tearing from this plane for that equate sigma t with sigma tp into tearing area of this plane it will be w minus 3 ds because 3d hole is coming into thickness of the plane plus minimum of crushing or shearing of these rivets now here three rivets are coming so first i am writing uh, uh, to expression of avoiding shearing of these three rivets it will be uh, equate tau with tau p into shear area of one rivet which will be pi by 4 d square into k where k is right now for this question k is 2 because it is subjected to double shear into number of rivet which is coming which are coming in this side and in this side three rivet are coming so into 3 comma for crushing equate sigma c with sigma cp into crushing area of one rivet that is dt into number of rivet which are coming in this side which is 3 which are 3 so into 3 so it is the expression of tearing to uh, 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 tearing to avoid tearing from third row means load carrying density to avoid tearing from third row now no more row as coming so whenever number of row is increasing when you are moving away from load p that is in case of diamond pattern so calculate pt1 also pt2 also pt3 also if three row are if one more row is coming then pt calculate pt4 also okay and minimum of a uh, pt1 pt2 pt3 will be overall tearing load density but right now our objective is to calculate total overall actual load carrying density and actual load carrying density will be minimum of load carrying density which are coming by considering all type of failure and right now what failure we are considered shearing load carrying density that is ps crushing load carrying density that is pc tearing from first row that is pt1 tearing from first second row that is pt2 and tearing from third row that is pt3 and minimum of this value will be actual load carrying density okay similarly if examiner is asking efficiency efficiency expression of efficiency will remain same actual load carrying capacity upon load carrying capacity without rivet and hole okay actual load carrying capacity you have calculated and the expression of lo load carrying capacity without rivet and hole will remain same it will be sigma tp into w into t which i have i have already explained to all of you earlier okay now i am solving one question related to diamond pattern it is the question what this question is saying two flat plate is subjected to tensile force p are connected together by means of double strip plate butt joint with diamond pattern as shown in figure so it is double strip plate butt joint with diamond pattern you can see diameter of rivet is 15 mm and diameter of rivet hole is 16 mm so diameter of rivet is given it is 15 mm and diameter of rivet hole is also given it is 16 mm now width of each plate is 200 mm and thickness of each plate is 10 mm so width of each plate is 200 mm and thickness of each plate is 10 mm now assume allowable tensile stress of the plate is 100 mega pascal so allowable tensile stress that is sigma tp is given it is 100 mega pascal and allowable shear stress of rivet is 70 mega pascal that is tau p is given it is 70 mega pascal and allowable crushing stress is 150 mega pascal that is sigma cp is given 150 mega pascal and we have to calculate actual load carrying capacity so our objective is to find actual load carrying capacity so first we will calculate load carrying capacity to to avoid all type of failure and whatever minimum value is coming that will be the value of actual load capacity now here it is diamond pattern 
Oh, so first we will calculate simple part that is calculation of crushing and shearing load capacity is simple. So first we will calculate crushing load capacity and shearing load capacity. So first I am calculating crushing load capacity that is pre C means load capacity to avoid crushing failure of rivet. Now how to calculate this? So calculate crushing load capacity first we will equate sigma C with sigma C P into crushing area of one rivet it will be DT. Now when crushing failure will occur, when, when crushing of all rivets are occurring per plate, so to now to, to, so we will multiply this with number of rivet per plate and here you can see number of rivet per plate, whether you are taking plate A or plate B, uh, suppose this is plate A and in plate A number of rivets are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So total number of rivet per plate that is capital N is 6. So we will multiply this with number of rivet per plate that is 6. Now sigma CP permissible crushing stress is 150 into D diameter of rivet is 15 into T thickness of plate is 10 you can check into 6. So we will get the value of crushing load carrying capacity and it is coming 150 into 15 into 10 into 6. It is coming you can check calculation 135000 newton or 135 kilo newton. Okay. Now second we are calculating shearing load carrying capacity which I am denoting as PS. So now we are I am calculating shearing load capacity. Now how to calculate that? First equate tau with tau P into shear area of one rivet. Shear area of one rivet will be pi by 4 d square into k. k will be 1 for single shear will be 2 for double shear into number of rivet per plate and right now number of rivet per plate is 6 so into 6. Now here permissible shear stress is given it is 70 mega Pascal into pi by 4 d square d is diameter of rivet which is 15 square now value of k so for that we need to see whether one rivet is subjected to single shear or double shear so here once rivet you can see it will also get shear for from this plane and it will also get shear from this plane means right now in one rivet shearing is occurring from two plane so can i say if this rivet is subjected to double shear and since it is subjected to double shear value of k will be equal to 2 value of k will be 2 Okay, and since it is double strip plate but revision definitely it will be subjected to double CR. So value of K, right now value of K is 2 because it is subjected to double CR into 6 number of rivet per plate. So by solving this we will get the value of shearing load can capacity of this plate which is coming of this system which is coming 70 into pi by 4 15 square into 2 into 6. It is coming 148 440 0.25 newton in kilo newton it will be 148.440 kilo newton okay now we will calculate tearing load capacity so we will calculate tearing first see the uh, the nearest row from those lo this load p the, it is um, it is first row here number of rivet is one now upcoming row is the this row, row this is row t and in row 2 number of rivet is more so we will calculate PT2 also means load capacity to avoid tearing from second row. Now next row is this row, this is row 3 and this row 3 again number of rivet is more here it was 2 so here it is 3 and since number of rivet is more so we calculate load capacity to avoid tearing from third row also that is PT2. So we will calculate now PT1, PT2 and PT3. So first I am calculating PT1, PT1. So first I am calculating PT1, PT1 is load capacity to avoid tearing from first row this row I am representing as first row. So PT1 is load capacity to avoid tearing from first row. Now how to calculate? I am uh, uh, explaining this by taking plate A or load P of plate A. Now we want to avoid tearing from this plate. Yes, sir. Now in this side of uh, uh, row 1, in this side of row 1 if I will set this, it will be like this. Now if tearing from this row is occurring, can I say this part of plate A will get separated from entire section because in this side no other rivet are coming. Okay, so if you want to avoid tearing from first row, we need to avoid tear. Uh, if you want to uh, avoid failure from this tearing of first row, we need to avoid tearing from this row. Okay, because in this side no other rivet are coming because uh, and, and that due to this, if tearing from this row will occur, this part of plate A will get separated. Now, the expression O will be to calculate uh, tearing from this plane first equate sigma t with sigma tp into tearing area of this plane for that first calculate effective width effective width will be w minus one hole is coming so dh into thickness of plate and since in this side no other rivet are coming so 
so it is the expression of pt1 that is load connectivity to avoid tearing from first load now permissible tensile stress is given in the question permissible tensile stress is 100 into w is width of the plate and width of the plate is 200 minus ds ds is diameter of hole it is given it is 16 into t t is thickness of plate thickness of plate is 10 so we'll calculate pt first and it is coming 100 minus 200 minus 16 sorry, 100 into 200 minus 16 into 10 it is coming 184 triple zero newton in kilo newton it is what it will be 184 kilo newton. so it is pt1 now we will calculate sin instance in row 2 number of rivet a is more as compared to row 1 so we will calculate pt2 also p2 2 months means load carrying schedule to avoid tearing from second row now how to calculate this so we want to avoid tearing from this now if you said this region side region of plate a means this region okay if tearing is only occurring from this plane this part of system will not get separated from entire system why because this rivet will not allow so when this part of system will get separated from entire system when tearing from this row 2 is occurring along with that either shearing or crushing of this rivet is occurring and in this side right now one rivet is com coming so if we want to calculate pt2 we need to calculate uh, uh, first uh, uh, we need to have a tearing from this row plus shearing or crushing of this rivet so first i am writing the expression to have a tearing from this row for that uh, we will equate sigma t with sigma tp into tearing area of this plane now tearing area of this plane will be w minus 2 ds because in this plane two hole is coming so it will be w minus 2 dh into thickness of plane plus along with that we have to avoid shearing or crushing of this rivet means minimum of shearing or crushing so first i am writing uh, to avoid shearing favor for that uh, we will equate tau with tau p into shear area of one rivet which is pi by 4 d square into k right now k is 2 because it, rivet is are subjected to double shear into number of rivet in this side and right now in this side one rivet is coming so we'll multiply this with one comma to avoid shearing failure we will equate sigma c with sigma cp into crushing area of one rivet which is d2 into number of rivet in this side which is one okay so what will be the value of pt2 it will be sigma tp that is permissible tensile stress is given it is 100 mega pascal into width of the plate is 200 minus 2 ds diameter of hole is 16 into thickness of plate is 10 plus minimum of tau p tau p is permissible shear stress it is 70 you can check into pi by 4 d square d is 15 square into k is 2 because it is subjected to double shear into 1 comma sigma cp sigma cp is permissible crushing stress which whose value is 150 mega pascal into d is 15 t is 10 into 1 okay if you will calculate this you will get the value of pt2 and it is coming uh, first i am calculating this term 100 minus sorry into 200 minus 2 into 16 into 10 it is coming 168300 plus minimum of this and this so i am first i am calculating this it is coming pi by 4 15 square into 2 into 70 it is coming 24740 newton comma this is coming 150 into 15 into 10 22500 so minimum value is this so we will add this so ultimately pt2 is coming 22500 plus 168300 it is coming 190 Five double zero newton in kilo newton it will be one ninety point five kilo okay similarly if you focus in third row this is third row here number of rivet is again more three which is more than two so we will calculate for this question pt3 also so next we are calculating pt3 pt3 now how to calculate pt3 So ultimately, this is row 3. Now, if you said th this side region of plate A, now 
now when this part of plate a will get separate when tearing from this row is occurring along with rivets which are coming this side hey, hey, this at three rivet are coming so when this part of plate a will get separated from the entire system when tearing from this row is occurring along with shearing or crushing of these three rivets are occurring means rivets which are coming in this side right now in this side in this side how many rivets are coming three rivets are coming so to avoid a uh, tearing from third row we need to avoid uh, we, to avoid P, or to calculate pt3 first we need to calculate uh, load density to avoid tearing from this plane plus minimum of shearing or crushing of these three rivets so first i am calculating to avoid tearing from this plane it will be for that equate sigma t with sigma tp into tearing area of this plane which is w minus 3 dh into 2 because in this plane three hole is coming so w minus 3 dh into t plus minimum of shearing or crushing of this three rivet so first i am writing for shearing it will be tau p equate tau with tau p into shear area of one rivet which is pi by 4 d square into k into number of rivet which are coming in this side and in this side three rivet are coming so into 3 comma for crushing equate sigma c with sigma cp into crushing area of one rivet which is dt into number or rivet which are coming in this side which is 3 now so it will come pt3 sigma tp is 100 mega pascal you can check uh, w is 200 minus 3 dh is 16 into t is 10 plus minimum of tau p tau p is 70 mega pascal you can check into pi by 4 d square and d is 50 into k since it is subjected to double shear so k is 2 into 3 comma sigma cp sigma cp is 150 into d is 15 t is 10 into 3 okay so we'll get the value of pt3 this term is coming 100 into 200 minus 48 into 10 it is coming 15230 plus minimum of this and this so first i'm calculating this it is coming pi by 4 into 15 is square sorry pi by 4 into 15 is square into 2 into 3 into 17 it is coming 74220.126 newton This 150 into 15 into 10 into 3. It is coming 67500. So it is minimum. So overall PT3 will be minimum of these two values is 67500 plus 15230. It is coming 219500 newton in kilo newton. It will be 219.5 kilo. Okay. Now uh, now we have to calculate overall load carrying capacity. and overall load carrying capacity will be minimum of load carrying capacity which are coming by considering all type of failover now see minimum now uh, this is pc which is 33 35 this is ps out of this 135 is minimum so right now 135 is minimum uh it is pt1 it is more than 135 so again 135 is minimum this is pt2 again it is more than P 135 so again 135 is minimum it is pt3 again it is more than 135 So again, overall minimum value is PT. Uh, sorry, overall minimum value is 135 kilonewton. So can I say actual load carrying capacity of this system is 135 kilonewton? Okay, because overall minimum value which are coming by considering all type of failover is 135 kilonewton. So actual load carrying capacity of this system is 135 kilonewton. Okay, so actual load carrying capacity is 135 kilo. Okay, th so this is diamond pattern of riveted joint. Okay, so I think are you understood? So we have completed this entire chapter of riveted joint. Okay, in which first we have discussed uh, introduction of riveted joint. Then we have discussed. Uh, uh, then we have discussed various types of riveted joint. What is lap joint? What is butt joint? What is uh, uh, multiple row riveted joint? What is single row riveted joint? What are pattern of riveted joint? Chain pattern and zigzag pattern. And now we have discussed diamond pattern. then we discuss various terminology of riveted joint then we discuss analysis of riveted joint when number of rivet in each row are same and after that we have discuss one special case that is diamond pattern and we have completed this chapter of riveted joint except eccentric loading in riveted joint 
because uh, when I will discuss eccentric loading in riveted joint, first we will complete after we, right now we, today we have completed riveted joint chapter. After that, I will complete bolted joint chapter without eccentric load. And in uh, after that, in uh, another lecture of one short series, we will discuss eccentric loading in bolted joint and riveted joint simultaneously. Because method to solve the problem of eccentric loading in bo of bolted and riveted joint are same. Means as per my flow of machine design, I consider riveted joint different chapter without eccentric loading case, and bolted joint different chapter without discussing the riveted joint case. And for me, eccentric loading in bolted and riveted joint is one different chapter. Okay, because why I am discussing eccentric loading in bolted and, and riveted joint simultaneously? Because methods to solve the problem of eccentric loading in bolted and riveted joint are same. So we have completed riveted joint without the dealing the case of eccentric loading. Okay, so we have completed this chapter. This is entire team of team Drona of mechanical engineering. He is Devendraji sir, Aproop Rao sir, Amit Dikshit sir, Vishwajit sir, Sandeep sir, Kuldeep sir, Vinay sir, Vishal sir, it's me, your RB sir, Ratan sir, Ratan sir, uh, Vinod sir, Swadesh sir, and Aditya Pal sir. So this is entire team Drona of mechanical engineering. Okay, so thank you. Now we will meet with in this one short series with another chapter of machine design in some other days. Okay, till then, thank you and Jai Mataji.